What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another installment here of Honest and Uneducated, the show where we talk about anything from movies, movie news, video games, comic books, just all sorts of fun stuff like that. We got some stuff, though. There's been a, a couple interesting things, a lot of kind of DC and HBO Max kind of related news, and then a couple little tidbits, little sprinkles of your Disney Marvel flair coming in here, too. So I'm, I'm excited to talk about some of this stuff here. But joining me today to kind of break some of this stuff down, though, is none other than Rick Metz himself. How are you doing today, Rick? I am doing just great. How are you? Oh, not too bad, man. Another day with Snyder Cut upon us. Yep. Falcon Winter Soldier upon us. How about that leak? Yeah, yeah. Everybody <laughs> who... I, unfortunately, I went to try to do it. Actually, too, I got a story. Let me let me introduce John, and I should tell this story real quick because we got John Knight here himself as well. How you doing, John? I'm good, man. Glad to be back. Uh, looking forward to a pretty w next wild uh, what month that we've got coming up of stuff. I mean, we had a kind of a lull this week, but we got a pretty wild month coming up. I think. Yeah, we got no no one division anymore. No 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 cool show to review for today either you know that's uh, the downside to it um but yeah we got a, a hell of a month coming up with snyder uh, snyder cut falcon Winter soldier godzilla mortal Kombat. Mortal, <laughs> mortal Kombat. Kombat. Yeah. like that's a lot of stuff right there no but yeah. with uh rick was mentioned before the the snyder cut kind of tom and jerry fiasco on hbo max so there if you have if you didn't hear about it when a lot of viewers on HBO Max went to watch the Tom and Jerry movie, I apologize if that was you, um, because I heard the movie was garbage. So, <laughs> unfortunately. But, to their surprise, the Snyder Cut started playing all of a sudden. So, they, apparently they cut it down, and like took it down like an hour and a half into it, as far as anybody got into it. And I don't know if that was purely by virtue of Tom and Jerry being an hour and a half movie, so that's just all the amount that was on there, or if... That's when HBO Max and Warner Brothers discovered the F up. Either way, I feel like that would have been more disappointing for me to only be able to watch an hour, hour and a half well, of it, and then it's gone. You got to think somebody's getting fired. Maybe. Maybe. I don't it's know. A pretty big screw up. Although it's kind of a taste of what would have happened if they had stuck to the uh, fandom release method. In what like, sense? He, he, well, because originally they were going to release it in installments. Like, oh yeah, yeah, right. You get to watch the first hour, and then you'd have to wait a week and watch the second. So that would suck. Yeah, maybe it was. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm I definitely would be disappointing, glad. but yeah, I'm definitely glad they went back to the whole "it's a movie" thing. But the funny story that I had with that is I went to try the whole thing out when uh, I went to go watch Tom and Jerry, and that was if you remember, I told the story about how I've had my HBO Max subscription, like, essentially for free. Because I, I had HBO through my cable provider, and then I canceled it and just got it through Amazon because it was cheaper. But then all of a sudden, I canceled that, too. I forget why. It was, like, prior to HBO Max coming out. I forget what it was. Either way. I, I, but I still could get on HBO Max. Like, it still let me sign in through my cable provider and all that stuff. That's probably, I think that's why I ended up canceling on Amazon, because I was just able to, like, get in with my cable provider information still. But so I went to do that to go watch Tom and Jerry, and it was like forcing me to renew, like everything. Like they finally got me to where <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't just get it for free anymore. So it was really disappointing. So now I had to, had to officially sub to HBO Max. So, oh no, yeah. No. Speaking of which, I don't know if you if you saw this. Did you see Netflix is? Uh... They're they're testing out, or people think that they might be testing out a method to cut back on the amount of shared subscriptions that are out there. Yeah, yeah. So they were going to start doing like password verification or sign in verifications or something. Yeah, they're actually doing it in some places now. Like, um, they're asking for verification, but you can like skip it. You can say not at this time or something, and they'll they'll allow you to stay logged in and keep doing it. But but the speculation is that they're they're playing with the software and the implementation of it in order to actually f go full on implement it and, and it'll, uh, you know, coming months, if not sooner. Yeah. And this thing, I've seen a bunch of people like being mad about this and it really doesn't make any sense to me. Cause it's like, you have to pay for the service if you want the service. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's I, like, I, I, I think they're, they're, their approach to it 
where for so long has been kind of this. Yeah, we know people do it, but we don't. We're not really we're not sticklers for it. We don't care has lulled people into this false sense of entitlement that. Yeah, well, if it was if it was fine for, you know, the previous five years, why isn't it fine now? I I think that's where Amazon may have or not Amazon. That's where Netflix may have gotten themselves in trouble. Um, but I also, you know, I, you know, it, there's there used to be this thing with like apartments and stuff like where if you paid a certain amount for apartments, they or if you lived, I can't remember what that was. That may have been an urban myth. I, I won't go into that. That may have been, I was going to say there was a thing like where if you lived in a certain place for a certain amount of time, you became a de facto resident and like they couldn't just kick you out um, just because you didn't pay rent right away or something. I don't know. But uh, but yeah, that's, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Like Netflix thing. Just because you just because you've had it for so long, you, you feel like, well, they can't kick me out. I kind of own this now, but we'll see. Yeah, it's just like the thing is, too, like uh, you just need to know like the password and approve the sign in. So it's like it really isn't going to change anything unless you're like literally stealing someone's account. Well, and that's I think that right. that's what a lot of people have been like. I, I don't know about a lot, but I, I constantly hear stories about like, oh, yeah, I use my girlfriend's parents, you know, sister's account or something. Mm -hmm. It's like, how in the hell did you even get that? Well, I was over there at Thanksgiving one time and we wanted to watch something on my phone. So she gave me her password and, you know, now I have it. And so I just use that to watch it. And it's like, I mean, like it's one thing to like borrow your, your, your spouses or your, your parents or something, I guess maybe, but man, when you're, when you've got some, a friend of a friend of, or I guess people posting it on like message boards or something, like maybe that's an issue. Yeah. I the thing is, though, it's like if, if even if it is a family member or something like that, it's like all that's going to happen is they're going to make you verify whoever email is tied to the account will get an, a thing sent to them where they just have to approve the sign in. So if it's your sure. mom, just tell your mom, hey, can you approve this? Like it, it's like yeah. you can still use it. So the only yeah. thing this is going to affect is literally people still who have stolen account information how because like sure. it, or you know it's like it's or stupid. no longer have or or no longer have a relationship with the person that they got it from yeah and yeah, don't, yeah and don't want to you know make that like i you know i've heard, i also hear about stories about you know husbands and wives that get divorced or girlfriend boyfriend that break up or boyfriend boyfriend that break up you know and they're still using their significant others log and stuff, you know, years later and stuff. And the other person's just nice enough to not kick them off or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's pretty common though. I mean, there's yeah. so oh, many yeah. people that share accounts like that. And yeah, I mean, I know multiple people off the top of my head, you know, and I hate to say it, like I've offered up for like the Mandalorian, for example, Hey, you want to sign into my Disney plus to watch the Mandalorian? Go ahead. You know, but sure. yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's and, like, but that's, it's, you can still do it. Well, you can still do it. It's just like if the verification sure. thing comes in, you're gonna have to reach out to them and say, "Hey, that's me. Can you approve that?" If they don't, they don't. It's not. It's not yours. <laughs> yeah, really. But what? But what Rick just said is like one of the main reasons that these companies, I think, kind of turn a turn a blind eye to these kinds of things is because if Rick can get somebody to log in and watch the Mandalorian and they love it. And like, they're like, yeah, man, that was great. Like maybe that's enough. Maybe that, that is enough for the, that person to be like, you know what? I'm going to sign up and get my own account because I want to be able True. to watch it right away. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to have to contact Rick every time I want to watch it. Yeah. You know, I want to be able to. So I think, I think that, you know, getting people invested into the service is, um, one of the benefits of allowing that account sharing that, that I'm sure is one of the reasons they have not, Taking taking more steps sooner to try and crack yeah. down and stuff like that. Yeah, because that's what they've been essentially doing. So everyone now is invested into Netflix as it is. So they're gonna yeah. buy it. Like you know, they're not just gonna be like, "Well, since I'm not getting it for free, I'm just like, well, <laughs> that's fine." Like then you, well, you don't have Netflix. Forget Stranger Things. I'm out. I'm yeah, yeah. Like, I'm it's, it's, I don't need The Witcher. I don't need just <laughs> all this stuff that you have on there. Like you're, you're gonna get it. I just don't know. It's, 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 I'll, I'll go back. I'll you go get back already like. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, let's go back to. <laughs> I mean, although now with how many streaming services that are out there, we're we're paying more. If you have a mall, we're yeah, yeah it's insane. You're it's like over a hundred dollars if you have every streaming service right now. So it's like yeah, that's, that with can the, get expensive. With the caveat on demand, 
That's the exactly. best. You get on, on demand. demand you get to, you get to pick what you want to watch. Yeah. Right? So I it's know, still I know better. Traditional cable has kind of gone that route, and they offer more on demand choices. Mm-hmm. But like, you, it's not just the old days of cable where you turn on like the home shopping network or you turn on the weather channel and just let it run all day while you're yeah. doing other stuff. Like for sure. You just, now, now you, you decide, Hey, I want the office to run in the background while I'm doing other stuff. Exactly. It's, 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 a, it's the streaming way. It may be annoying, but I mean, it, the stre- blockbuster you effed up, not buying Netflix. Let's put it that way. You know what I mean? Cause it was, it's been a revolution since then. And so it's like just super convenient. Like, and that, like, like you said, just, you can just, the on demandness of any streaming service is is the beauty of it, you know. Just, you just turn it on and it's there. You know? It just yep. is what it is. Yep. And half the stuff is like really good too, anyway. Like Mandalorian, yeah, oh yeah. Wandavision, all this stuff, you know. So it's good. The weird thing well, is too, like, though. Go you know, ahead. I was going to kind of divert. So if you got, if, if you oh, want to follow up, say, like like you were saying, the convenience, but also the mobility of it, like. You know, oh, yeah. you, could, you up until recently, you know, past four or five years from what I understand, because I haven't had traditional cable in over a decade. But, mm-hmm. um, you know, you, with streaming, as soon as streaming was up, you were able to take that on your phone, you know, on your tablets and, and that that other functionality of it uh, really propelled it, I think, to the forefront of entertainment. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You got me watching The Mandalorian in the bathroom at work. <laughs> yeah. Like, you just at Why work. not? <laughs> well, you yep. literally it's, it can do it whenever you want. Like, you know, it's, yep. it's kind of great in that way. The only other thing I was going to add with the, the account sharing thing is, like, I don't know why people, like, would be allowing them, like, because, like I said, the only people that this is going to affect is people who are, like, essentially stealing the account information. And like, if you can see, like, you can go on and see, like, all the like the devices that are using your account right now on Netflix, like, and you can deactivate it, like, it'll say like the IP address, what kind of device it was, et cetera, et cetera. So, like, I don't know. I, I feel like it's like a non-issue that people are making an issue for no reason because nobody is willingly letting people just steal their account. Mm. Like, if I noticed a weird login in my Netflix account. I would terminate that login and then change my password immediately. So it's like, I don't know. It's just, I'm just still just kind of dumbfounded as to why anybody thinks it's like a problem an inconvenience. If you're going to con, if you're going to continue sharing it with your family and you, the one person has sent the email, sure. Inconvenient. But I don't know why people are up in arms about it. Cause I just, I know like some people have been throwing a fuss. I'm just like, just pay for Netflix. Who cares? Like, right. Jesus. But either way, yeah. Regardless, let's get into these for this first main topic here because this one is not streaming service related, but we do have some some streaming service stuff coming up. But this first topic here today is uh, everybody, everybody, well, at least me. I was disappointed when we found out that Ben Affleck was gonna, you know, he, he put down the cape and cow. He was no longer gonna be Batman. I was disappointed in that. I wanted to see his Batman solo movie. He was my favorite Batman. I wanted to see him go up against Joe Maganiello's Deathstroke. Deathstroke costume looks awesome. So I'm at least glad we're going to get a little, a little another shot of Deathstroke and the Snyder Cut coming up. So that's going to be good. But we did get a decent version of Batman, at least what looks like a decent version of Batman, to replace that Ben Affleck Batman movie. And that is the Matt uh, Matt Reeves' The Batman with Robert Pattinson. And he just recently posted that they have wrapped production on The Batman. So just... It, it, it's good. It, he said it was the last day. I'm just excited for it because that trailer, I think, that they released at Fandom, I think blew everybody away. Blew everyone's expectations away, I think. Let's put it that way. I was already confident that it would be good because it's Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson's a fantastic actor. So I know people still, to the, just, there's still people out there who just think, oh, the Twilight Boy. But yeah, I just go actually watch his movies that he's done since twilight that was like 2008 man that was so long ago like he's, he's been in a ton of stuff and he's a great actor so but guys the batman's finished filming what are you guys got any thoughts about this i'm just excited I, i'm hoping we get another trailer here soon or something a little bit more footage because you gotta think the first trailer that we got from this thing they had only shot like 25 percent of the movie or something Damn. and they were still able to get like that dope of a trailer out 
So now I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to some, some more footage now. I'm super stoked. That's like one movie I'm really excited for, especially after seeing that trailer. It was like, holy shit. Oh, yeah. I did not expect it to be that good. No, I think that's the thing. I think I expected a good movie, but I really like it really did exceed my expectations. Like that trailer. Yeah. Like it yeah. was yeah. it kind of it was really good. So I'm excited for it. I, I mean, for me, it hit it hit that it hit the perfect tone of a Batman film. Like like it was dark and grounded and, you know, the the detective angle of it, like Batman at crime scenes, like that kind of stuff is is really the Batman that, that appeals to me a lot. Um, the, yeah. the the detective part about um, Batman and and you know obviously his appearance in Detective Comics is where he started. I, I love that aspect of him, so I'm I'm really excited for um, that part of it. Uh, the way it looks like it's it's not just a it's not just Batman versus the villain or whatever. There there's there's other stuff going on that. Um, it's going to be a layered story, I think. And then you, of course, got, um, oh, was it Colin Farrell's penguin that was unrecognizable as him, yeah. uh, in, in the trailer, which is very exciting as well. Um, so I'm yeah, I mean, for, uh, I, Paul Dano's Riddler though, yeah. like that, that take oh, on the yeah. Riddler looks, it's going to be mean, interesting. It looks really cool. Like it's just like, it looks like a crazy serial killer kind of looks it reminded me of seven definitely like i got yeah, seven yeah. vibes from the trailer yeah so like, i got I'm i got eight vibes forward. you got what you said you got vibes. seven yeah, yeah i'm sorry you got eight <laughs> vibes of course six vibes eight uh, vibes you know. yeah yeah seven eight nine yeah for sure <laughs> I, I will say like i i was the biggest part of this for me was that they finished filming because yeah. kind of like we've kind of heard from the witcher um there have been various reports from the Batman set where, you know, they, they started production on this before COVID and then COVID hits and it blows everything up and it, you know, messes up the production of so many films, but this one in particular, which obviously I, I care most about being a huge Batman fan. Um, mm -hmm. And then you hear that they, they're, you know, they were one of the first productions to kind of get back to work um, last half of last year. And within you know, days, I felt, I don't even think it was weeks. I think it was days of being back on set. You hear that Robert Pattinson's got COVID and, and they're shutting down production yet again. And, you know, it just, you know, the Witcher's kind of gone through that with their season two. Like if some of these productions feel like they're almost snake bit in a way, and you worry that something's going to happen, that they're just, at some point, they're just not going to be able to finish or they'll finish, but it'll just take longer and longer and longer. So hearing that they finally wrapped filming is is a great sign that this movie is hopefully going to hit its release date what about a year from now i think yeah i think, I think they pushed, pushed it to, to october 2022 20. or did they bump it, it up Octo i thought it was october 20 i thought at fandom it was october 2021 and then i think they yeah. pushed it back to march or may of i thought they kept an october date let me look it up real quick I thought they kept the October date. Then that would be a full year push, I believe, on it. I, mm -hmm. October seems like the appropriate March time 4th. for a Batman so film. About a year from okay. now, March 4th, 2022, yeah. That's why, I, for so some fun. reason, maybe it was just because Joker came out in uh, October, and then I knew 2021 was supposed to come out in October. I just thought the the long Halloween vibes that has exactly. been like rumored for it, I was like, it's they're probably still doing October. Like I love the idea know. of an October move Batman film. Yeah, it makes sense. I also don't want to wait another seven That's months to get that film. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, go ahead and bring it out in March. Yeah, I was saying like that. That's a really long time from now if you think about it. But I mean, oh, yeah. the post production and all that sort of stuff it takes a while. But it's just hard to believe it's going to be like an entire other year until we get to see it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, normally, like the movie production process, I mean, it, it varies, but it's normally like a six month thing and then post production for about a year, about so about a year and a half. But this has been like, God, they started they started production on it like 2019, like 2020, well, 2020. Like, yeah. Matt Reeves has been writing the script since like 2019, 2018, but like, gee, it's See, been this, a long time in the making. This doesn't even feel that like, I, I maybe it's. Uh, because my other favorite Batman franchise, the the Dark Knight films, I mean, you had a three year gap between mm. Begins and the Dark Knight, and then you had a, a four year gap until you got to Rises. So, um, you know, this the, the, another year to wait for this doesn't really feel like that long. Plus, I guess I've got 
a lot of other movies that were pushed back because of the pandemic to fill this year in. So it's a good yeah. point. I mean, there's mm-hmm. like, there's like, I think just between Marvel, we're going to get like 10 projects this year, including yeah. World Vision. Damn. Like between Disney Plus and then the movies that are coming out, like just in 2021, there's going to be like 10 yeah. MCU related things. So the DC side is going to be lacking a little bit because we only have Snyder Cut. There's no other DC properties coming out in 2021, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we got Wonder Woman. Well, but Titan we Season Three will come out. Hopefully, I think that's going to come. I think I didn't they finish I filming it. I, uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. We just haven't. We haven't gotten a trailer. We've gotten teases of like costumes and yeah, actors, actors and act in the costumes, but we we haven't gotten. Uh, like I haven't seen anything of like Barbara Gordon yet from that, which she's supposed to play a part. And yeah. I would have thought, you know, we, there's been no trailers yet. I'm not sure what, you know, what COVID did to their production. So dude, I um, swear not too long ago, like one of the actors or the producer or something posted something like it was like a cryptic tweet where they said like, you know, something coming soon and nothing ever came. Like, because everyone thought it was going to be a trailer or something, and like, no, literally there was. nothing happened. There, no, there was. They did. I know what you're referring to, and uh, it was Blackfire. Uh, oh yeah, her, you're, yeah, you're right. They released her costume mm-hmm. like the following day. So I mean, it was something. It just wasn't like I think uh, based off the tweet or the the post. Like everybody thought, like, oh, it's going to be like this a trailer is it. We're finally going to get a trailer, yeah. and it it wasn't. So, um. Yeah. Yeah. But DC's definitely, again, I go back to that Walter Hamada interview where he says they're going to be ramping up and you're going to see yeah, like five right. or six DC things a year. And, you know, we'll get one this year and then there's Batman's on film on deck for next year. But I don't know what else is. I mean, yeah. they, maybe it, we, they only do the announcements. They, they announce yeah. stuff and don't follow through with it. Man. Never follow through. Like. Well, we were just, we we were just talking about that in Discord earlier this this week. Was it this week where we I posted like the original slate from the original? Oh yeah. Uh, you know, two thousand what was that? Two thousand fourteen announcement of all the upcoming DC projects and oh yeah. yeah. Out of the out of the nine that were listed, like six, only six got made, but all six missed their um you know their their release dates by at least a year and most of them missed it by two or three years i mean it was just cra- crazy the yeah. way they have get, fumbled that get it together dc i know I, it, <laughs> like, it's just insane because like i say all the time like like i like dc like characters more than marvel characters and like th- they just it, that's just my own personal preference but like D- warner brothers has some of the greatest stories in general some of the greatest characters in any medium in the dc universe and they just like drop the ball like they yeah. put out some amazing stuff like the dark knight trilogy and the, the batman looks great man of steel they put out good stuff when they actually put it out but like like i said marvel literally has like 10 things coming out this year now granted some of that's because of covid pushed back so like maybe there would have only been seven but like either way they have all this stuff like they've been a well-oiled oiled machine for 10 plus years now and like well, what, yeah, you look, what have we got from you look, dc you look at the success of not just marvel but other superhero franchises too have been ha, ha, at least had semi-decent runs i mean you had kick-ass had what there were two kick-ass films. Mm-hmm. Um, you had, I, I'm trying to think of, you know, Hellboy has gotten multiple makes. I mean, in the past two decades, we have been in kind of this golden age of, um, maybe, maybe past decade, we've been kind of this golden age of superhero films. And DC really hasn't had much. They've had mm, very no. little during this. Now, now before, you know, from the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, Virtually nothing was coming out from any superhero. You know, superhero movies were scarce to say the best, uh, or to say the least. Um, or they were the, laughable. DC re- or they were laughable. But but yet, yeah. some of DC's biggest films came out during those times when you mm-hmm. didn't even think that you'd ever see a superhero film. You I mean you had the original Christopher Reeve Superman movie, and you had eighty nine Batman, and you had the Dark Knight trilogy. And, you know, it's just. The Dark Knight trilogy kind of falls within the current just because I think, you know, 
2000 on, you started to see a shift in audiences to more superhero fare, but nothing like it's been in the past 10 years with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's just, yeah. it's it's surprising that DC hasn't been able to capitalize on there. Not DC. I don't I don't put the blame on DC. I blame Warner Brothers. Yeah, Warner Brothers, but, for yeah. sure. Yeah, they're yeah. the production company behind the movie. So the movie department's yeah. failing. It's, it's it, Warner Brothers is in charge of that. Like, yeah. DC can only do what... DC can do like Warner true. Brothers is right. so they're so entrenched in they were let me put it this way my impression is that they were so entrenched in the old ways of movie making the the you know we have to do it this way we have to follow this formula we have to do it you know and Kevin Feige came along at Marvel and said I don't care about the formulas I don't care about what you know tradition says will and won't work at the theater this is the way we're going to do things um and DC just couldn't wrap their heads around that and then the past you know half a decade they've been dealing with this at&t merger which is throwing things into disarray mm -hmm. so yeah it's been awful yeah the only thing too i'm worried about with uh because you mentioned the uh not worried about i'm questioning but because you, you mentioned it before with the waiting between like three years and then four years for the dark knight uh like the gap between there i'm wondering what kind of gap we're going to be looking at for this this batman trilogy you know what I mean? Because like, yeah, we can wait another year for it now, but like, well, how long is it going to be until we get the second one? Because yeah. this is supposed to be a trilogy. So, well, according to uh, what some some Twitter users, there there may not be another one. Oh yeah, let me let me. I wanted to talk you, about this too, based on what you. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to earlier. talk about this, and I I don't want to like call the guy out, but like I'm gonna call the guy out because this was just like dumb and, and, and so I mean, this is one reason why one stay off the of 4chan and don't believe everything you read on the internet yeah. like i don't like social media not just be, like just just don't be ignorant everybody like and i'm not being mean to anybody here but like the dude's question here i got it pulled up here Fortunes actually are good. he literally says is it true your bet he, he responds to matt reeves posting that this is the last day of filming on the batman like, so, like, that's the preface. And this dude re replies to Matt Reeves and said, is it true that your Batman trilogy was canceled due to Zoe being pregnant and the father is Robert? Or that rumor was just made up? <laughs> Pretty sure the trilogy isn't canceled if he just finished filming right. the movie. Like, right. you know, it's like, dude, like, your question is insane as it is like but like you answer it yourself like you you're you're replying you're literally asking this insane question to a post where he's confirming Sorry. it was complete like the movie's done <laughs> like he's done filming so I was like yeah, come on just so don't believe everything you read on the interwebs everybody that's just my message maybe stay off social media like maybe and everybody else already tore this dude up if, if you can i don't know if you can see the replies very well on screen but like that dude got he got a lot of hate for this, and I'm oh, not yeah. trying to add more to it. But I mean, I read it, and I was just like, it was a face palm moment, dude. It's like, well deserved hate. Yeah, it really it was. A real, just, I was dumbfounded to say the least. It, absolutely dumbfounded. <laughs> it's just one of those things too, where it's like, okay, why do you need to put out the gossip rumor like completely insane? rationale for it. Like if this dude <laughs> honestly is excited about Matt Reeves doing a Batman movie and was looking forward to it, to being a trilogy and is somehow is now concerned because of this crazy, like his aunt's, you know, janitor friend that works at WB heard this thing. Like what, you know, why, why include that in the post to Matt Reeves? Does he expect Matt Reeves to actually reply to him and say, well, you know, you're right. When we found out that, Rob, or you know robert had gotten zoe pregnant we all decided it was in the best interest of everyone to just can't you know what what does he expect from that like it's right the the, the lack of i don't know just uh, social dude, grace is is completely missing with that he, he piqued my curiosity i just like went to his uh tweeter there and like he is just a big old snyder fan so i yeah, don't know yeah. if he's just Rolling one or, of those guys, yeah. like you know, what I mean, it's like mad about you know the Zack Snyder stuff. Like, I don't, maybe that's it. So he's just throwing the shade at you know, because you know nothing can coexist. You know, like if the Marvel movies can't be good if the DC movies, you know, are, it, they can't be good either. You know, what I mean, like right. that right. kind of thing. Like, 
nothing can just be, you know, its own thing. It's just, I don't know. That aside, that was dumb. So maybe it's uh, him just trolling. Maybe not. I don't know. I just want to see a yeah. damn movie, because I'm excited right, for the movie. Right. I'm glad that they, uh, they're wrapping it up. I hope we don't have to wait a shit ton of time in between the movies. Like, I don't mind. Like, the three years is fine, but, like, it took Matt Reeves, like... It took him a couple years to get this thing done, like just script wise. And then obviously yeah. the COVID pushbacks and all that. So I'm just hoping that like during that time that he took to really like iron this script out, that he like but, gave it, he has his blueprint for the trilogy. That's what I'm kind of hoping. So then like now he just has to iron out the actual dialogue for the other yeah, ones. But he, um, <clears throat> he was brought on board to do Ben's Batman movie, correct? Like originally it was going to be Ben was going <clears> to, <throat> <clears throat> direct oh, no. and act and star in his movie. yeah yeah and then <clears throat> excuse me and then i thought matt was brought in to be director i thought ben took a step back from the directing part of it but was still going to star in the movie and then when ben dropped out that's when matt went and started his own basically started from ground zero and, and that was the built. spin that warner brothers and ben affleck were putting on it because like th that all happened during the Justice League promotion, the Justice League promotion, so, like at Comic Con and all that stuff. But uh, Ben was already out at at this point. Like he they wasn't gonna do the movie, all that stuff. They scrapped the script, all that because like it was a complete. And then they brought in Matt Reeves to do an entirely new thing. But yeah. Warner Brothers and Ben Affleck for the longest time were putting a spin on it, and that's when Ben got up on the stage at. Uh, at comic-con and said like oh i'd be an ape on the floor for matt reeves like <laughs> that was never gonna happen like they okay. were because they didn't want the bad they didn't want the story of uh you know they're promoting justice league they didn't want the story to be ben affleck is not batman anymore when they're trying to yeah. do they're trying to yeah, promote yeah. justice league so like would you yeah. preferred another ben affleck batman movie of your like the robert pattinson one yeah and honestly i would i would have rather had I'd like to just have both. Yeah. Like, why not both? In all yeah. honesty, since, I mean, especially since they're leaning into the multiverse stuff and they're going to have the multiple Batman already, like Ben is coming back for the flash. Yeah. So that's if they make that movie, we'll see. We're actually talking about that. We got another topic about flash coming up. So, <clears throat> so I, don't I know. yeah, I, I, I'm in a way glad things worked out the way they did as far as getting the Matt Reeves version. Because I don't think that you would have gotten the Matt Reeves version if Ben had been given his film. And as much as I like aspects of the Ben Affleck Batman, there's other aspects I don't like about it. And I, I just feel like even, even if you remove Zach's influence from it, Ben agreed to play the part the way that Zach had written it with him, you know, being very vicious and, and murdery. Um, and so I, you know, uh, that clearly Ben doesn't feel that the character has the same qualities I feel are important to a Batman, um, mainly don't not killing. So, you know, I, I, I would prefer to see the Matt Reeves take on now. Maybe Matt Reeves will have Batman killing people and I'll have the same problem again, because <laughs> apparently there's a whole contingent of society out there that feels it's perfectly acceptable for Batman to kill. So um, well, everybody we'll kills, though. Like everybody kills. I don't know why everyone Batman freaked out about like, Superman and Batman killing people. Like they, people die all the time. Well, people die because of Batman. Maybe yeah, not but directly or anything like well, that. Well, Batman never sought out like Ben's Batman didn't seek out and like murder people. It was collateral damage. Like, exactly. He didn't just straight up like I'm gonna fuck I'm gonna assassinate this dude. Boom. Like, sure it never he did. Happened. I'm gonna no. Sure he did. He 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 picked up a a shipping crate in that awesome fight scene at the end of BBS. Oh, that's and a great scene. And a guy's head. Oh yeah. Which results in his head squishing like a melon. That's yeah. that's 100%. instead of instead of just shooting him with the grappling gun through the leg and like tearing his uh you know calf muscle all to hell so he'll never walk again. But incapacitating him and not killing him, he kills him. Um, you know, he's chasing the robbers in the in the Batmobile, and he he wrecks their car and like just obliterates the car 
But see, that is collateral like, damage. Even the throwing no, the thing. That's no, no, during no. the he, fight. He it, could it, shoot it, the it, tires. He could, there are numerous uh, ways that he could do it. Hmm. They, they could have not robbed armed. people and then been bad guys, too. Okay, okay but he's not the <laughs> Punisher. See, this is this is where I'm saying, like, there's a whole contingent of society that believes it's okay for Batman to kill him. I just don't believe that. I oh, believe no. that Batman I just think was there's born a difference. of... Batman was born in a, through the ultimate the ultimate trauma that a, a child can face in, in having your parents, the, the people you look up to, the people that you care for, that care for you, they are your world are taken from you. They're, they're taken from you forever. And I just can't see that, that, that motivating somebody to do what Bruce Wayne does would result in a person that grows up and, risks ever inflicting that pain or trauma onto anybody else because you never know these criminals may have kids and yeah you can maim them you can hurt them you can make it so that they never want to go back out and do that again but to kill them and and, and risk influencing that trauma on another child there's no way bruce wayne would ever do that like yeah. i i know i i know that there's Captain America kills. Yeah, Captain America is a soldier. I buy that. Iron Man kills. Iron Man wasn't born of the same trauma. Like there's a there's a a higher plateau or a higher pedestal that and that's one of the reasons I like the DC characters is there there's a higher pedestal. They're not what we should. They're not what we are. They're not how an everyday person would react to to, to these situations. They are an ideal to look towards to to achieve. There's that whole line in Man of Steel that's so brilliant that it was taken from All Star Superman, where he says, you know, mankind will will I can't re I'm not going to remember it verbatim, but you know, they, they'll they'll race behind you and and they may stumble, mm. they may fall, but they'll they'll follow you into the sun. They they're they're the ideals to to, and I don't know why, I don't know why we've gotten to this point in in society and in in cinema and entertainment where directors feel like, Oh yeah, I'm going to be gritty and cool and make these characters, you know, you know, indiscriminately kill or, or not, or, or, or even if it is collateral damage, you know, not at least make it so that it's possible that the, the guy survived. We've, I think we've talked about it before, but Batman, the animated series encountered a lot of the same issues, but they always did the brilliant thing of, even if it was unrealistic, They'd have a guy thrown off a bridge and he'd land in the river and you'd cut away for a second to the continued chase, but you'd always cut back and see the guy's head bob up and he'd be splashing around just to see that he's okay. Like it may be a little unrealistic, but but it, it's the idea of it that, that's more important than I think anything else. So anyway, that's my soapbox on Batman and killing and why I that's my biggest issue with the Snyder uh, films. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the thing too, like the DC and I think a lot, because there are a lot of stories related in the, in the comics where they, and the animated series is even one of them too. Cause I think a lot of people, especially nowadays, they grew up with Batman, the animated series and in the animated series, they make a point to like, I don't kill like, you know, Bruce Wayne, like that, that was one of the things, but, um, they are like the DC characters are often more portrayed as like these mythic, God like characters, you know what I mean? As opposed to like Iron Man and Captain America, like they're they are just dudes, you know. Sure. But they're the 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 Trinity, the Pantheon, the Justice League, they they really yeah. they have been elevated to a more mythic godlike status. So like I could see I could totally see why people don't like that kind of thing. It doesn't bother me. It yeah, would it bother, bother me if it. Bruce went to like if he straight up turned punisher like if if bruce wayne was going around like and just ending people like straight up like the punisher does like that's not batman like that's that's not batman but if you're in a fight and engagement in a car wreck just like when superman was fighting zod like and the buildings were falling down it's like there's just some things you can't avoid like well you know, and that's, like it's just you know, what it is I, like and it doesn't the bother superman me. And, the yeah, superman and zod yeah, it's all fake <laughs> They are right. It's a it's a movie. <laughs> so I just like yeah. I just go along with it, you know. Like it is what it is. Yeah. It's, it's different. Like when Superman, if it, it was the same way with Superman, like Superman shouldn't just walk up and like break everybody's neck, you know. But like with Zod, he didn't have a choice. Sometimes like, you got to cut off a finger to save the hand. Yeah. Like, well, and that was that was the thing that was so brilliant about the Superman movie. I know the death, the destruction, of Metropolis, and the Zod scene in particular rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And I guess I was able to go with that because 
Superman at that point isn't Superman. He's not the he's not this, you know, guy that's been doing this forever and for a like day. Has, has has encountered all these this is his first time ever really fighting somebody. Yeah, he just got his suit. His, like, he yeah, just yeah, got the like, suit. <laughs> he's been Superman for all of 48 hours and he's faced with these beings who are just as strong as him and able to decimate the world and and they are and, soldiers. And, and Zod Zod straight up tells him I will never stop. Like mm-hmm. there's nothing you can do to stop me because there's no ways he can contain him. There's no way, even if he knocks him out, even if he knocks him out for a period of time, as soon as Zod wakes up, it's on again. Mm-hmm. Like, it so would never stop. that, that, that resolution to that story, I, it, it I accept and I was actually mm-hmm. okay with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why I never understood. Like, and the destruction thing, I, people made such a big deal about the main and steel destruction thing. And I, I never understood why it's just like, there's nothing he can do about this. Yeah. It's like, there's nothing he's he can trying do. To like, like, yeah. He can. He's trying his best here. He's, he's fighting multiple Kryptonians. Like, it's like, what do you want him to do? Right. <laughs> well, and people, people say he doesn't rescue people in that movie. And he doesn't, he doesn't. that's not true. There's a scene where yeah. a military helicopter yeah, gets grabbed out of the sky and he makes it a, a point to go save mm-hmm. the guy before going on to the fight. And I think in, when you get to the battle in Metropolis, like there is so much going on. There's so th- these beings are capable of killing a hundred people. So a Superman stops even for a second to go save one person that may be falling out of a building or try and prop up one building. Zod's going to ki- kill 10 times that many, you know, by, by Superman being distracted. So it's mm-hmm. like, he's making very difficult choices and, and because he doesn't know any better, he doesn't know how to fight him a different way. This is his first, first time doing it. So yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I've got I've taken us way off topic, but <laughs> it's all on it's all on yeah. topic. Either way. In the end, though, we're all excited about the Batman. I'm glad yeah. that it's wrapped production. I'm I'm hoping for another trailer soon. I'm gonna end it with that. And then we'll move on. So guys, the question do is you think, Oh, what what you got? Sorry, I was just gonna say, do you think we'll get one sooner or do you think we have to wait till fandom again? <sighs> it's a year away. So did they announce another fandom? I can't even remember. Are they doing it again? Have they announced I it yet? I believe so. I believe they announced last year that they intended to bring it back, but I don't know for sure. Well, let me see real quick. Fandom, DC Fandom 2021. Jesus 2021 Fandom event. So they t- apparently back in October they teased one for 2021. So okay. I would assume they would do this around like July. Because that's around Comic Con time, since they're yeah. canceling Comic Con. Um, so I would say that'd probably be the earliest that we would get one because it's a year away. Like I know we've already gotten a trailer for it because of fandom initially, but I mean we would never, under normal circumstances, have gotten a trailer two years before the movie is coming out. So sure. yeah. I could totally see them doing one for fandom. But other than that, they really wouldn't even need to start marketing until like. October of this year, like six yeah. months, you know, from March. So yeah, I don't know. I'd love them just to start pumping them out. Though. I wouldn't care. Like, just do <laughs> it. Like, why not? Yeah. But the question is, guys, what do you think about that? When do you think we're going to get our first uh, bat, the Batman trailer, Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson's of the Batman trailer? And then are you excited? To, are you excited for the movie? Would you have preferred, you know, to have that Ben Affleck Batman Snyderverse movie? Are you excited to see a Ben Affleck show back up in the Flash? You think maybe with HBO Max and Snyder Cut and all that stuff, like maybe they can do both since they're doing the multiverse thing? Whatever you think, let us know down in the comment section below. All right, guys. So our next topic here is it stays in the vein of a. Uh, you know, Warner Brothers, HBO Max, and all that, because HBO Max themselves just recently announced an interesting uh, new ad-supported plan for the platform. So if you're familiar with, like, uh, I believe Peacock does this right now, they have, like, multiple tiers in the kind of, uh, like, that you can get for for the service itself. So you can get the free, uh, it's free, but it has ads. And then there's, you pay X amount, and then you get, you know, so-and-so. You unlock more content or whatever. Like, Peacock has a kind of a, a very unique uh, tier model like that, like, but it's kind of like Hulu, and they have the free ver- they have the free version with ads, and then they have Hulu Plus with no ads. But you still get ads, so I don't really get that. You still have, it's like some programs still have an ad before the show, so I don't know. Regardless, HBO Max is now going to be doing that themselves. So they've come out here and they've given a couple of details on it. So 
apparently this is not going to include any of their theatrical releases. So if you have the, fr if you're going with the free version with ads or whatever, well, it's actually not a free version yet. They just say it's another t an ad supported option. So it doesn't say necessarily that it's going to be a free version with ads. It, I think they're leaning towards it. it, it correct me if I'm wrong. Um, guys, but John, I think I know that you, you went through this article, but I did, it may just be a cheaper version, but showing exactly. Ads. Yeah. That yeah. was my understanding of it. It was just going to be a cheaper, uh, version because I mean, uh, to be honest right now, it's, it's the, the most expensive streaming platform out there. It can be. So Cause there, there are not Netflix tiers that can exceed it. Because I think my Netflix okay. is uh, like $15, $16, $17 a month or something. Oh, okay. Because I get it, like it's up the there. 4K it's version. Definitely not and, the, yeah. It's definitely not the, what, six ninety nine introductory offer that Disney Plus offered when they yeah. came out. So, And that's the thing, too. People like, uh, I don't know if a lot of people maybe, a lot of people I feel like give it a bad rap for it being expensive, but HBO has always been that price. It's actually yeah. cheaper. It was it, I had to pay like eighteen dollars to get it through my cable provider. So when HBO Max came out at fifteen, it was actually cheaper than HBO. HBO HBO's never been cheap. Like no, it's and always it has, been yeah. And it has more content than HBO yeah. ever had because you have not yeah. just not only the HBO content, but then you throw in all the other various Warner Brothers content. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's true, definitely an interesting true. thing. I like, and I know. They, they, HBO Max, as we've talked about before, they've been not really necessarily like struggling for in getting subscribers, but they haven't had the success that they, they were hoping for and not nearly the success that like a Disney Plus has had. Like uh, Disney Plus just got, I think they just said that they passed a hundred million subscribers yeah. already. So, like they, and that was, I think their initial projections were like 40 million and like they have well exceeded that, obviously. And HBO and Warner Brothers, they obviously thought HBO Max would be substantially better than where they're at now. So, and even so, even with Disney Plus uh, um, getting that 100 million subscribers, they still reported a loss. Over really? the, and that just shows how expensive these services are. So even with HBO, I, I want to say they actually did, remember, when we talked about this before, it was it should have around 50 million, right? Between all their things. So maybe 20 million i can't remember but either way that yeah, puts it was them so about the same weird yeah, their tiering thing was weird yeah like what counted what they counted as an hbo max subscription but what they also but then like they had so many that were just hbo subscriptions out there it's mm -hmm. very strange how it broke down and again because of the branding of it, it became, I think people were confused about what they even have so yeah, yeah. exactly because yeah. i know in that article it was like anybody who had HBO or HBO go, all they had to do was sign in with that same account and you have HBO max. And there was something along the lines of like 50% or more of those users haven't even activated HBO max yet because they just yeah. don't know. Yeah. Like it's just, it was confusing. Like even for someone like, like us, when it was first announced, it was like, wait, what is this? And we're actually looking in to try to figure it out. So you can imagine all, you know, like your mom is never going to know. Like, is it, they're yeah. not going to care. <laughs> they're just no, going to be like, what, yeah, what, what do I do? Just press. Okay. Like, so yeah, so this is an interesting thing. Like that I, I could see definitely helping them bring in new subscribers as long as it's, I don't, it could be a double edged sword. Cause if they come out and it's, you know, a more comp competitive price, we'll say for like comparable to like Disney plus is like, they just went up to like seven or $8 a month. They went up a dollar. Um, since the, the introductory uh, run. But if it's going to be the same price as that, but with ads, is that going to be enough? You know, is that going to be enticing? Cause it's like, well, I don't want to watch ads, you know, like yeah, everyone, it depends you know. on how many ads there are. You know? That is the one thing they do say on here that they're not going to feature ad breaks. So you don't need to worry about commercials cutting into like your That's game good. of Thrones. So what I'm guessing their model is going to be is just like Hulu um, for the like Hulu with no ads thing, because like I said, off the top, like I have the Hulu with no ads, like I pay the extra for the no ads thing, but some content on Hulu still like they're con contractually obligated to play an ad before the show starts. And then after the show is finished, which you obviously don't have to watch that one because you're done watching the show, but 
I assume that's what they mean by there not being any ad breaks, so they'll probably just play an ad before the show. Maybe two ads before the show? Like, who knows? But that's my guess, is that they'll play a, a set number of ads before, like, once you start the show, and then you can watch it free, like, of, if, of interruptions afterward. That's definitely the better way of going about it, because I tell you what, I've been watching that Superman and Lois show, like I find I I wanted to take a look at it and I was if you haven't checked it out yet pleasantly surprised I was never yep. a fan of how Superman was portrayed in the CW world and Supergirl no. and all that stuff it was like the only way like they made Supergirl look good was to make Superman look bad and like that's what they did for everybody like everybody could beat that Superman up like <laughs> every one of them like it was they just I did not like what they did with him but then this Superman Lois thing I gave it a shot it's surprisingly good. Like it's it's actually good. It's not the same Superman. Like it, it's the same guy playing him, but it's not the same one. I think they've even said that he's from a different Earth than because they have the whole multiverse there in the CW Arrowverse thing. Yeah. yeah. Which are, are they even gonna? They still call it Arrowverse, even though Arrow's done. I just find yeah, that I killer. So. You know. I mean, yeah. The common, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why this like CW verse, DCW verse. DCW like that's what it should be, DCW. Like there you go, there you go. I'll expect a check in the mail, Warner Brothers. Expect <laughs> a check in the mail. Um, but no, the show is actually surprisingly good. But I've been watching it on the CW app, and oh my god, dude, they play ads. There's so many ad breaks, like <laughs> it's insane. Like before the show, like two or three ads. It's just like watching regular cable. Like it yeah. literally is like watching. That's and annoying. It's, it's really frustrating. And granted, it's free. Like I don't have to pay for the CW app and all that, so it's fine. But it is really obnoxious. Like trying to watch a show and you get like you, you just the ads go on for so long, you just forget even where you left off sometimes. Yeah, that's frustrating. Like, that's like the, the that's the only reason I really don't like. I'm fine with them having an ad because like they need to get paid. That's fine. But like. When you when you play in so many that like you just forget where you're even at anymore. It's like you get five minutes of show followed by five minutes of ads. It's like it's a bit of an unbalance. Like you, you need to just like bit, yeah. break it up. Play. I'd rather sit through ten minutes of ads before the show than to you to dice up the show and make me forget where the hell I'm at. So that's reassuring that uh, hopefully they'll do that. But hopefully they won't play ten minutes of ads just to watch the show. So yeah. we'll see. And. It, Honestly, too, the only other thing really I have to add about this is it says that it's not going to include the upcoming slate of theatrical releases, but they're only supposedly going to be doing that, at least for right now, for 2021. So what does that really mean for 2022? Like, it, cause in, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's not like that's something true. they can exclude to kind of more promote the more expensive version. You know what I mean? Because right now it's like, you can pay eight dollars a month, but and you have to watch. You know, you'll get ads, and then you don't get to watch the theatrical releases. But that's not even going to be a thing come twenty twenty two because they won't be able to say. But you can buy for fifteen. You can get all these theatrical releases and no ads. Like so, they won't really have that marketing angle come twenty twenty two to entice people to upgrade to the more expensive plan. You know, well, I guess you'll have to wait and see. I mean, that yeah, it's a good point. yeah, yeah. That's the only no, one. go ahead, Rick. I was just screaming. No, that's yeah. all I was going to say, really. I was just commenting on it. Yeah. 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 So I, I agree with Rick. I, the, the, we'll have to wait and see if that, because I actually don't know that they haven't said one way or the other that they're not continuing that. I mean, I, obviously it was intended as a this year thing for the pandemic. And I, mm -hmm. I think in order to calm their partners down they they said that they were intending it to just be for this year but they haven't come right out and said that they won't continue doing that um next year and if it if it drives enough subscribers to them you can bet you can bet <laughs> any films that they put into production going forward after all the debacle with this thing they're going to have a clause in them that says if we choose to we can put it on our streaming service oh yeah, yeah. or if anything like i think what's going to happen because the bigger thing is like despite what they want to do the we don't know how what the theater industry is going to be like come next year. That's that's true. the big yeah. thing, you know, because it's like they could go full steam ahead, want to do it back to normal theatrical releases next year. But if the theaters aren't open, like, well, they're they're reopening right now. But if they're not sustaining enough revenue because people aren't going anymore, 
uh, they're going to just start pumping them on the streaming service or that theatrical window is going to not be, you know, 90 days like it was before. They're going to, I think what they'll probably end up doing is putting clauses in, like what, probably doing something with the theaters and putting clauses in like particular movies. Cause I think universal has done this with some of their movies, but like they get to choose there's like some movies can have like a seven day release window and then it can go on the thing where they have to like pay the, st- the theaters like something. I don't know. It's a big convoluted thing, but I just think we're going to see that theatrical window probably shorten. But if like the theaters can't sustain any, you know, if they're not bringing in money, this, the, we, we might just, COVID may have just shot the whole freaking cause this, suck. like Disney wants to put their stuff right on, Disney Plus, like yeah. that's what they want to do, but they're also they know they can make billions of dollars in the theaters. So why would they not? But if they're not making billions of dollars in the theaters, why not do it on? Then they're just gonna put it on Disney yeah, Plus. You know, same Plus. same with HBO Max. Like we'll just put it out. Like whatever saves marketing. Like who knows? So I don't know. we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I just just diving back because I didn't really say much about it, but I I just need to say I, I hate the ad supported tiers of stuff. Mm. I remember when, when I went to like, and maybe it's because Netflix was, was the leader in the, in the industry. And like, they were the ones who kind of kicked off the whole streaming issue, you know, um, platform, but Netflix never has never included ads with their stuff. So there's, there's an expectation with streaming, at least in my mind, that you don't have to watch ads with it. You pay them a price and you don't have to watch ads. Um, and I still remember the first time I tried Hulu out and like Hulu was like, oh yeah, whatever, $9.99 a month, you know, you get access. I'm like, all right, cool, I'll try that out. And I start Hulu up and I get five minutes into the first show I'm watching and this stops and there's an ad that plays. And I'm yeah. like, mm-hmm. well, wait annoying. a minute, I'm paying you money to advertise to me? What? What is this crap? Why yeah, in the world bullshit. do I want to pay you money to show me ads so that you can make more money? Like you either show it to me for free and throw in all the ads you want, or I pay you money and you just show me what I'm buying because exactly. that's, yeah. you know, that's the you cover the advertisement. Like, yeah. yeah. That's why I hate so, them playing all those damn commercials when you go to the movies anymore, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. Like, At least know, there's no I mean, ad breaks in movies, though, like in theaters. No, but like, dude, they they put the show time like on your ticket. It says like seven thirty. The movie doesn't start till like eight. Yeah, eight. it's like, dude, you're trying to plan your night, and they're like playing you thirty minutes worth of commercial. Not, and it's not just trailers. It's thirty minutes of commercials and then trailers. Yeah, like, and it's I hate that. Like, it's insane. Yeah. They need to fix that once the theaters back open. Yeah, like yeah. that because it was getting out of hand. Like, but I totally agree with you. Like, free with ads, I'm all for it. Like, you shouldn't definitely. I think Netflix should have that option. In all honesty, I think how the way Peacock actually does their thing, and I have to look more into it, but from what I've heard, is like they have a free version with ads, but only like some things are unlocked. Select so, content. Like, yeah. yeah. So then you can pay to like unlock more content, but still have ads. And then you can pay another premium, like third tier, to just Jeez. have everything with no ads. It's like an EA game. You just have to keep paying. <laughs> it, it kind of, but it's actually a good model because it, it, it. That's a great it, analogy. It, it really is. It's like it. It's, it was really good, but it puts the the the. It, it's in the hands of the consumer what they want to do, how much money they want to spend, like what's important to them, you know. And it gives them a, like some options. So like I'm all for as long as it's not confusing and convoluted. But I don't know. Like my, not, my biggest thing is I don't I don't want to pay for something and then get advertising on top of it. You yeah. give me the price, let me know what it is, and I'll decide if it's worth paying for it. And I, but but you can be I don't care how much you discount it. I'm never going to pay you to throw advertising into it. Like that's just that just seems so just so wrong to me. Like yeah. why yeah. would I pay? Like hey, why don't you come to my house and pitch me products while I'm washing my dishes? You know, mm-hmm. like, what, 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 and I'll give you money to do that. Like, why? Like, yeah. No. No, I'm totally with you. I, I do not like the the paid and ad version. I'm, I'm totally on the same page. Free with ads, all for it. Do do whatever you want. But I can see why they would do it. But as long as there's um, an option for free, like, that's what I think they should do. If they want to do the whole, they should make it to where you get free with ads, no theatrical releases. And then the next tier is you get the theatrical releases. And then the, the $15.99 tier is everything. 
You know what I mean? So you get like a five, six dollar a month one, um, and then that'll give you the theatrical releases, but you still have ads. But then the, you have the free version where you have ads and no theatrical releases, right? Like yeah. if they want to do something like that, it's simple. Break it up a bit, like have these like because again, it's it's giving the consumer some options. I'm all for it, and you're actually getting something out of it. So it's like you're free with ads, but if you pay, you get access to all these theatrical releases. And then if you like, then you can dump it, up, bump it up, and get everything. But you know, but either well, way. and okay. I mean, here's my my biggest fear is that I I think the one of the reasons I hate the ads, regardless of what the tiers and options are, I just hate ads. Period. If you're paying, because yeah. the is is as companies realize that people will pay for that sort of thing, it's only going to be a matter of time before they go. You know what? Even on your highest tier, we're going to play an ad before your show. We're going to play an ad. You know. True. They're going to start inserting that stuff wherever they can, um, as long as they think they can get away with it, and as long as people are paying for stuff, and 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 they're t accepting the ads, that's just going to lead them to be like, well, yeah, we're going to remove our paid no ads tier completely, and you're going to have to watch ads regardless if you want to watch our content because we know that there's a segment of the population that will, and, mm -hmm. and then I, and you know, it, it's ads. a slippery slope. <laughs> it's a slippery slope for sure. It 100% is. Either way, I think, uh, guys, I think it's a good idea for HBO Max. It'll, I think it would help them. I am worried, just as John is, with the whole slippery slope argument with it. Like, I don't want to see ads becoming a thing. I already said off the top, it's annoying that I pay for the ad-free version of Hulu, but I still get ads for certain programming. It's a bit annoying. Granted, it's just one ad before the show, but still, I'm already paying you. Shouldn't be getting the ads. So, but guys, what do you think about this? Do you think it's a good idea for HBO Max to add this extra tier in? And what do you think about them withholding the theatrical releases and all that good stuff? Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. All right, guys. So our next topic here is sticking with HBO Max. But it has to do with a little movie that's going to be dropping here on March 31st. And that's Godzilla vs. Kong. And we have gotten this. This is going to be a brief spoiler warning. Because there has been a toy reveal, and we covered something like this like forever ago. I think there was a toy reveal of this like way back when, but now there's been like more official, actual, like kind of like promotional photos for, I'm going to say one more time, spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear anything about Godzilla vs. Kong, then mute for a minute. And then like pause, come, it's going to be like a five, ten minutes, skip ahead. But they've gotten our first look at Mechagodzilla from uh, Godzilla vs. Kong in toy form. It's kind of been like the worst kept secret. Because like I said, I think this, we, I think we did a story on this like, god damn, it was like a year ago, I feel like at this point. And, uh, but here we go. We have our look here at him. And guys, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not the biggest fan of like how this just looks. Like, that's not what I wanted. So <laughs> what do you guys think of Ugh. like how it looks? I, I, I think it looks god awful. Like just being yeah. honest. I don't like the design. It looks, no, I mean, of course this is a toy we're looking at, so it's not going to be the final product you're going to see on screen, but it just doesn't, it doesn't have a good look to it. It doesn't like, it just doesn't look cool to me. Because like, it's like transformers, they're giant robots and they look cool. Yeah. Yeah. The movies this, suck, but yeah, yeah exactly. But, but uh, this doesn't look good. No, it just looks like I'm trying to think of a best way to describe it. It just looks like, I mean, it's, uh, I was going to say it looks like a toy because it is a toy, but it just right. looks cheap. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, no, it does look cheap. It and, and the face looks really bad. That's what I'm saying. Angle. It doesn't look aggressive or anything. It just looks like a big goofy robot. Yeah, like, which is another thing I just didn't understand about it. Like, if the humans are gonna make Mecha Godzilla, like, make why, it look cool. Why what designer? Like, why wouldn't they make Mecha Kong? Like, why wouldn't like why would they make Mecha Godzilla to begin? Like, like the whole thing with Godzilla, he doesn't have like I I don't know. It's just it's not a very good form. Like, you know what I mean? Like, functional form. What gives the humans a fighting chance against them, you know? But why didn't you just make a giant Gundam? Like, <laughs> right. Look, look at or Pacific like a, Rim. A, yeah, what are they like, called? Uh, Jaeger? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, in Pacific Rim, they made, like, Jaegers. They made giant Gundams. That like, was basically Godzilla without being Godzilla. Exactly, and they made those to fight kaiju monsters. Such a good movie. We're a better it was form. A it's a good. The, the second one, one wasn't good. so good, but yeah, the second one not so much. But I don't even think I finished the second one. Like I was just like checked out of that movie. 
But yeah, I'm not very excited for how... I mean, I'm excited to see this movie, 100%. And I think uh, Mecha Godzilla will be cool in the movie. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. I hope anyway. But I don't know. I just find it odd that, like, from the human standpoint, let's just make a robot version of Godzilla. Why not make something better? Make a fucking Gundam Blow or something. Up. Yeah, like, like... Well, you can't. He's uh, yeah, nuclear. That's, doesn't, can't. that's good for him. Like He'll true, take that true. all day. <laughs> like, he'll eat yeah. that shit for breakfast. So I'm curious. I heard some like weird like plot snaps for this too, since we're kind of talking spoilers. And I don't know. This sounded really weird. And I think it has to do with Mecha Godzilla. Like they have like Ghidorah's like it has to do with what may make is making Godzilla be like crazy and why he comes and starts attacking things and like Kong, you know, and Kong and everything. Because they show in the trailer like something's messing with Godzilla's mind. Like he's <laughs> he's out there and he's hurting people. Like He's fucking Godzilla. Yeah, well, I read that, like, I don't know if this is true, but it sounded weird. It sounded, you know what, the story for, like, King of Monsters made me think that this is 100% true, in all honesty. But it sounds fucking weird. But they have, supposedly, like, Ghidorah's head, and it's, like, setting off a signal that is making Godzilla, like, freak the fuck out. Like, for it's one... Like some sonar, like... Well, he can sense that it's Ghidorah. So he wants to go kill him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, cause like, it's the, like a dog smelling. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's like, imagine him like a dog whistle for Godzilla. So he's just like, apparently going crazy, trying to kill this Ghidorah, but he doesn't know where it is. Cause it's like, cause like they just have this head and they keep moving the head and the head's letting off the signal and all this shit. And I was just like, really send it to like, space that's gonna be the movie like i was like kind of concerned i hope that's the, but again based on what happened and got king of the monsters that sounds like something they would do it does like, it, it sounds really exactly does. like something they would do so i'm kind of worried they don't really rely too much on the story in godzilla movies no like it's no but they should they that's like they I could. Said last week or do i said to john on stream or something the story doesn't have to be good if the it just has to be tolerable because we're all here to watch Godzilla fight Kong, you know, like I don't need Shakespeare for this. I just want some good old kaiju, a romp, you know, just I want some fun, like yeah. that's it. I want big dumb fun, and I don't really, I don't know, just some head that's pretty much a dog whistle just sounded really stupid. So I kind of hope that's not it, and I hope, I hope. That this Mecha Godzilla thing turns out to be cool looking on screen. That's about really yeah. all I can hope for at this point. Because the trailer looked great, so I'm excited for the movie, but I don't know. This toy design definitely... It's not a toy I would buy. If it was some, coming from someone who buys a whole hell of a lot of toys, I'm not buying this one. Like, you know, I don't like this toy. No. Do you, so, you guys got anything else you want to add about this God, Mecha Godzilla thing? I Yeah, I mean... It doesn't, that toy doesn't look good. It looks oh. very janky. It doesn't look, like you said, I mean, we had Star, or not Star, we had Transformers things years ago that looked much better than this for for 2021 designs and, and, you know, CGI and whatever, you know, that they can make virtually anything. If this is the best that they can do, then that's kind of like a hard pass for me on, but I will say that, you know, it's very often the toy, the re toy reproductions of things are, are such pale comparisons to the actual things that, mm -hmm. you know, it could be that they just got the fact that it's metal correct. And that's about it. Yeah, they've got yeah, silver yeah. on it. And that's a, you know, they've got silver in the shape of Godzilla and that's about as good as they did with it. So we'll see. Yeah. That's pretty much what it looks like. It looks like a kid drew it and they made it a toy. Yeah, it really does. It's like, a good way to put it. Like, I mean, there's one last look at it. Like, this literally looks like a kid drew it. Like, this looks like something my daughter would draw, my five year old one. Like, it, like, no disrespect to her. She's five. But, like, that's what this looks like. Like, it just it looks it like looks, something I would have drew when I was five. You know? It, it looks like something like you have, like, the crazy crazy like old guy that lives in the junkyard by himself and it's like something he welded together himself and like yeah dude spare parts to to cobble together this this godzilla thing to take on godzilla like that's what it looks like to me it doesn't look like a sophisticated piece of machinery that some yeah. you know big industrial complex designed 
it looks kind of jank. And granted, too, I will say, this could be like your the Jack-specific model. You know, it could be the cheap $10 Mechagodzilla yeah, yeah. toy. Not your Marvel Legends one. You're not your not your Hot Toys editions. Like maybe it's just the like the the lower tier quality toy, maybe? I don't know though. Yeah. Nevertheless, guys, the question is, what do you think about this? Are you disappointed with the the look of this cuz offhand, like I'm disappointed with the look of, if 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 realistically speaking, if anything if if the Mecha Godzilla in the movie looks anything like this, I'm gonna be a little disappointed in the overall design. So hopefully, at the very least, he does some cool stuff, or the robot does some cool stuff. And hopefully, they don't use that whole door dog whistle head thing as the plot device to make. Like, that sounds kind of stupid too. But like I said, King of the Monsters withstanding, I could totally see all that being legit. So. But guys, let us know what you think down in the comment section below. All right, guys. So our next topic here is, again, sticking. I said off the top, we're going to have a lot of DC stuff and more HBO Max, Warner Brothers stuff to talk about. And we got we got two more Warner Brothers related things. So buckle up, dude. And this one is another. I got I'm I'm still in the, you know, I, I'll believe it when I see it phase with this because this has to do with the, the 15 year old Flash movie that's been a production at this point in time. Now, like a couple weeks ago, we 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 did a story where uh, Andy Muschietti, the director of the upcoming Flash movie, posted a picture of him outside the production studio, like the, the the production lot that they were on, and that was the closest we've been to this thing actually starting production in like literally like five six years at this point. But the camera still ain't rolled yet, so I still don't know what to believe. But either way, we have more Flash news coming out. And it's kind of one good and one bad, I guess. And one is that Billy Crudup, who played for one Doctor Manhattan in the Watch movie, but for two, he played, um, oh God, what was it? he played Barry's dad's name? What was his dad's name? I can't remember his head now. What's the, what's the actual name of the guy? Henry Allen? Is it Henry? Henry Henry. I think yeah. it's Henry. Yeah. I had a mine went blank there. So Billy Crudup has backed out of the Flash film, but. They have casted a Nora Allen, which is interesting because we we've known that they were going to be doing something Flashpoint esque, but it's kind of been like oh there hasn't been a lot of like actual no confirmation that they're doing the Flashpoint story right like they haven't said like yeah we're doing an adaptation of Flashpoint so if you're familiar with Flashpoint that has Flash goes back in time prevents his mom from dying and then it just creates a whole new world where. Aquaman and the Atlanteans are at war with Wonder Woman and the Amazonians and Bruce Wayne died in the alley and Thomas Wayne's Batman and Martha Wayne is the Joker and it's this whole fun world right this whole not fun world really this is like war going everywhere this is a big deal they haven't said that's what they're doing they've just kind of said it's been like Flashpoint-esque but now that they've casted Nora Allen in here I'm wondering if they are actually going to I, I almost have to imagine they are doing the angle where Barry runs back in time to save his mom. I would guess, because I uh, I don't know. What do you think? Uh, what do you guys? Do you think they're actually going to be doing that now that they, that this casting has come out? And I'm not familiar with the actress's work off the top of my head. I'll have to look more into it here. But uh, her name is Maribel Verdu. Um, but I don't know. What do you guys think about this off the top? I mean, it makes sense from what you're saying that they would go along with like the actual Flashpoint with mom and all, everything. But I don't know. It doesn't sound like it's going to go that direction. That's the thing with, like, they're doing this, the, Michael Keaton's Batman's going to be in it, Ben Affleck's Batman's going to be in it, so it's obviously not, that alone makes it not be the, the typical Flashpoint story. Yeah. But the still, the crux of it, being Barry goes back to save his mom, and maybe with Billy Crudup leaving, maybe they'll, maybe the catalyst for him wanting to go back to save his mom is maybe they'll say his dad died in prison. And then, like, so now he's even more sad, and he's like, well, just and just runs back in time and then, like, saves mom. You know? Like, and that's just, like, kind of the, the catalyst of everything, right? Like, maybe they do that. I don't know. Yeah. In the Flashpoint comic, it's funny you mentioned that, because in the Flashpoint comic, um, <laughs> that's, you know, a major plot point is that his dad is wrongfully accused of killing his mom, and he's mm -hmm. in prison. Um, but when Barry actually goes back and saves his mom in the Flashpoint comic... He sees her in the in the restored, you know, universe where she doesn't get killed by uh, reverse flash. 
but his dad never makes an appearance. Now, yeah. of course, you're right. you're to assume that his dad's alive and well. He just the comic just never bothers to visit him. Um, but it is it is interesting that with uh, Billy, uh, I can't how, how you say his last name. Crud up, yep. cut up, crud up. Uh, leaving leaving the uh, production, they could still get away. They could still mirror the comic Flashpoint and not miss a beat because he doesn't actually the dad doesn't appear in the comic. Um, I will say I think that they're going to use this more. I don't think they're going to do a direct like adaptation. Even even I, I think they're going to abandon. I could be wrong, but my impression, at least from the casting announcements, is that they're going to abandon the whole uh, far flung world where you know Wonder Woman, Aquaman are at war, and uh, Thomas Wayne is Batman, and all that. I think they're kind of going to abandon that and use the Flashpoint hijinks to bounce Barry around through the multiverse. Um, especially since, you know, we've heard that we're getting the Michael Keaton Batman and we're getting Ben Aff uh, Ben Affleck's Batman in it. Um, I feel like that's a an indication that they're gonna bounce him around to different parts of the multiverse because I believe I could be wrong too, but I, my memory is right, then I think when Hamada Walter Hamada talked about introducing the multiverse concept to the DC universe, to, to DC fans and in the movies. I think they were kind of relying on the Flash movie to kind of introduce that. And so it makes sense that mm -hmm. Barry doesn't just visit one alternate Earth, that maybe him saving his mom has repercussions that breaks the multiverse and and he has to visit multiple uh different Earth in order to restore things or get things back to a normal state. So, yeah, I think yeah. that's kind of what they're doing. Yeah, and the the other thing too is like in the 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 comic or even in the movie Flashpoint movie, um, Flashpoint Paradox, uh, like Reverse Flash is a big part of it. So there hasn't mm -hmm. been any confirmation that Reverse Flash is going to be in this movie. So I'm curious if curious if he's going to make an appearance and who would be playing him and what his suit would look like since Barry's is more practical in this world. Granted, he's getting a new suit that looks more like the new 52 Flash suit, but that was just concept art. So, I mean, we don't really know. Um, I'm wondering for that. And it looks like uh, in that article, Billy Crudup is initially just the actor himself is leaving because there's a scheduling conflict. Um, so he was good the with the uh, the morning show that's on Apple TV Plus, which is actually a great show. And I didn't know that they were gonna have a morning show season two until the news that Billy Crudup was leaving the Flash came out. So now it's good news for me on that because I I wanted I've been curious if they were gonna make a morning show season two because that was a damn good show. It's got Jennifer Aniston, Steve Carell, Billy Crudup. Great show. Go watch it. Apple TV Plus is only like five bucks a month. It's like the cheapest one you can get, and they got some good stuff on there. But either way, that aside, my thing is I'm curious with this movie when it comes to, like uh, like I said, the multiverse aspect. I do remember Hamada kind of leaning into that, saying that that movie's kind of kind of opened the door for easing everybody into the multiverse for DC. And I'm curious if, like, if maybe we get some... I'm excited to see what kind of, like, cameo Easter eggs we get, because be, I feel like it's a big missed opportunity if they don't do a... Uh, Michael Keaton, Batman, like like I said, I said before, like the Terry McGinnis kind of thing, just like have someone name drop Terry McGinnis and just like they 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 move on to something else and bring in like Jeffrey Dean Morgan just to have like he just he's running through and like boom you have Thomas Wayne Batman just for just for a minute you know and then he then he goes back to Ben Affleck's Batman and Michael Keaton's Batman you know what I mean just like bouncing around just like doing weird stuff. I, I don't know. I'm curious to see what they're going to do with it overall, like in the end. So, but yeah, it definitely seems like they're going to be a, leaning into that Nora Allen thing. And I'm wondering too if it's if Billy Crudup leaving is why Nora Allen got casted, or if Nora Allen was always in the plans for it. I would assume because of Flashpoint, she would have always been. But it's interesting that this news has came out at the same time. You know what I mean? So is it something that's been amended into the script to replace the absence of Henry Allen? Or did it just a coincidence? Yeah. Was you it know? like a plan? Or... Yeah. But either way, we'll just have to wait and see. And the question is, guys, what do you think about this? Do you think that the casting of a Nora Allen in the Flash movie means we're going to get a more traditional catalyst for this whole Flashpoint extravaganza Flash movie if it ever happens? That's still the main thing. If this movie ever happens. 
the camera still ain't rolling, and we've only gotten casting announcements and pictures of a studio, so jury's still out. But whatever you think, let us know down in the comment section below. All right, guys, so our next and final Warner Brothers HBO Max-related DC topic for the day is a little just thing that I just wanted to share with everybody if you didn't know it existed, and if you're in especially the Austin, the, the Texas, I think it's in Austin, and no, it's in Dallas, Texas. If you're in the Texas area, particularly in Dallas, and can make a trip out, there is a Snyder Cut, like, exhibit. Like, I, I don't know if you remember, like, a while back, at least at the museum here in, uh, in the state of Ohio, they had a Star Wars exhibit, so they had all, like, the screen-used costumes, and it was just this, you went to your museum, you got to walk around and see all this cool stuff. They are doing that in Dallas, Texas, for the Snyder Cut of Justice League. And uh, it looks it looks really cool, in all honesty. Like, it, they have some stuff going on in here. They got, like, the Flashpoint uh, Flash suit. They have, would you get a good look at here? They have Deathstroke suit. Like, just all this cool stuff. And then in Deathstroke's suit, one of the things I wanted to actually point out in this thing. And there's, like, a this dude, like, for instance, has a little quick video of it. And it's, like, four minutes long of just showing some of the stuff off himself. Um, but there's some cool stuff that you kind of just see in it. Like, uh, Deathstroke's suit, if I can ever freaking find it here. Okay, so here it is. What? So here's the Deathstroke Nightmare suit. Oh, Nightmare, okay. Yeah, the night, because that's where Deathstroke's popping up. It's like, where's the orange? Yeah, so he's in here, but there's even, like, it looks super cool for that one. That tight. Like, it looks awesome. It looks just as good as the freaking Deathstroke hot toy. Like, they were definitely inspired by the Arkham Origins oh, yeah, yeah. Deathstroke. It looks to a T like that. Dude's a but walking there's, weapon. Uh, yeah, dude. But they, they have a cool thing uh, they show right here. He has Kryptonite's bullets loaded in his weapon. So it's like little cool things like that. I just thought it was like super cool. Like if I was in Dallas, Texas, dude, I'd go check this out for sure. For sure. I mean, this thing is super cool. And they had uh, just, I mean, all the costumes are there, like I said, for everybody. They got uh, the flash or the, the nightmare flash suit, which also is like completely different and like pretty cool looking. That's cool. Like it was just, it was just a cool little thing. So if you haven't seen it, like I said, if you're in the Dallas area, Go check it out. I think they said that their hours are like pretty much, I think from like 11 a.m. to 8 p.m., but they close between like 2 and 5 or something, apparently. One, I, I don't live in the area. So one quick know. observation when they were showing that whoever that like guy with the Superman emblems on it, mm -hmm. not to bring it up like a weird topic or subject or anything, but it definitely looks like World War II German inspired, especially with the little logos like on the collar and all that. Yeah, um, you know, but well, that's um, where if, it's if you, supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. If you remember in the nightmare scene in Batman vs Superman, when Clark drops down, yeah, to like go pull the cow off of Batman, there's like those two guards that are wearing this gear because there's yeah, like it's definitely a, there's a bunch of humans that are like on the side of this nightmare Superman and dark side rule, you know, like some people went on to. Man, it's fucked up. Yeah, it's a, be a bad place to freaking live, dude. You got right. the terraforming of Earth to you it's know literally apocalypse. Called a nightmare, like it yeah. sounds awful. Not a good, not a good thing. Superman's bad. Dark Side's there. Like, be a fucking bad world. I mean, it's so bad that the Joker and Batman are best buds, pretty much. Right. I mean, think about that. All right. If if the Joker and Batman have to team up, you know, it's not a good, well, it's not a good place to be, like at all. But speaking of Joker, they have his suit here too, so you can kind of see that. His suit, honestly, though, isn't anything cool. They have he has like a bunch of badges on here though, which I thought was kind of a nice touch. You know, he just a bunch of dead cops just took their badges. Definitely very Jokery. But yeah, it was cool. There wasn't really any other cool things. Harley, he has Harley, Harley Quinn's, Quinn's gun. gun. There. Yep, yep, Harley Quinn's gun. So that was the Deathstroke having Kryptonite bullets, and then the Harley Quinn gun thing for the like that was like the two like. Easter eggs that like I saw in this thing, but I mean hell, there could be more. Like I said, so if you're in the area, go check it out and let let us know what it looks like. Because, or if like I said, just watch a couple videos online. I'm sure there's more that you can find on there. Cyborg doesn't look any different in Nightmare World though. He just has a freaking sash, a sash on. Yeah. Like what? What's he even needed for? It doesn't make any sense. South Card Whitaker Tower. There it is. 
So go look it up. I have no idea the price of admission. Don't know anything about it in that regard. I just thought it was cool. And I know a lot of people have been like wondering, like, why haven't they been marketing the Snyder Cut? And it's like, they have been marketing the Snyder Cut. And they have this huge exhibit down here. I don't know what people are like expecting for like, I, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know. Just, I, just, I just wish people would it's just a, be excited for the movie and just be happy when it comes out. <laughs> it's a very it's a very targeted campaign too i don't think mm-hmm. you're gonna see an advertisement for the snyder cut during you know wheel of fortune at, you know at yeah. night. I, I you know i think they're they're trying to be very selective with because like we've talked about they've pumped so much money into finishing this version of the film with no theatrical run in in the works this is strictly to promote and prop up the streaming service so there's going to be no additional in a sense there's going to be no revenue from the box office coming in of course you will hopefully the hope is that the streaming numbers will get a boost from this and which Mm -hmm. will be revenue um but you know they i think that they are trying to be they're not going to market it the way they would market a movie that was coming a big temple summer blockbuster movie so yeah well you know what when this show comes out we're only going to be four days away when this show right. goes up four days from so as you're watching this now we are four days away from seeing it ourselves and i, I honestly i i don't even think if too because i know you're a big theater guy and i, I like i love going with you this is the like I, I would be in the theater for this movie like in normal circumstances but honestly since i've already seen justice league i don't know if i would actually go out to see it in theater i think i would just watch it at home anyway like i'd just, go to the theater just because yeah. of just because like some of those scenes that we've seen, even in the trailers, the little snippets that we've seen yeah. in the trailers that we didn't see in Justice League, like Superman coming back and using his heat vision, and just looking yeah. completely badass. Like, True. I want to see that on the big screen. I can't imagine how many more moments like that Zach has, because for all for all the issues I have story wise with Batman versus Superman character, you know, the 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 way they portray the some of the characters, especially Batman, I will I will never say that he doesn't create excellent action scenes and excellent like the, some of his you know the spectacle of it is something to behold and I, I'd love to see that spectacle played out on the big screen. Some of these some of these throne room uh, snippets that we've gotten of Dark Side and mm-hmm. uh, some of the other new gods like just. I can't imagine seeing this, this, them on the scale of the big screen, let alone like an IMAX screen. So I'd be there in a heartbeat Mm -hmm. and barring me absolutely hating this cut of the movie. When I watch it, if it ever does get a theatrical run, I'm sure I'll go and, and and catch in the theater just so I can have that opportunity. Well, that's the thing. Zack Snyder absolutely is a visual storyteller, like a hundred percent. Like he, he, his stories are told through intense visuals and like kind of a lot of times can lack on the, the dialogue and the script portion of it. Not that they're terrible. Sucker Punch has really only been his bad movie. Like in all honesty, like you may not like BVS or, you know, Man of Steel and all that stuff, but like they're not bad movies i mean it's all subjective but i think they're they're well made you might not like what happened in them and that's totally fine but i would contend that they are very well made films you know what i mean i I would i would contend that the ultimate cut of bvs is a well-made film that's narratively told well Mm -hmm. Uh, i would contend the theatrical cut was awful was there were there are there are jumps in logic and reasoning that happen in that movie they're just so beyond acceptable that it explains why that movie had such a hard time and why Warner brothers got them. I think if they had released the ultimate cut of Snyder's BVS in theaters and not the theatrical cut, the cut that ended up going, if they had let it just be a three hour movie, I think it would have made a billion dollars. It would have given it that extra push it needed and also secured Zach's place at the helm of justice league, at least for the first part. Yeah, that's the thing too. I'll have to go back and like, because uh, when I got my new TV, uh, BVS Ultimate Cut is actually something I decided to watch on there. Oh well, yeah, and the other thing that would be cool too is since the Snyder Cut, since he's releasing it in the IMAX ratio, I would go see it in IMAX. Because like yeah. that would actually be like the entire movie would be in that format. Because if you've... I'm sure everybody's seen like the Dark Knight trilogy and everything. And like Nolan shot some scenes in the IMAX format. So you would see if you went to go see it in IMAX or even on your regular TV, when you lose the black bars, then you're in the big IMAX camera uh, 
they, that's when they were using those scenes. That, yeah, that's when they were using the cameras in that scene. But this would be the entire movie in that aspect yeah. ratio. So, yeah. which is it's rare. There's really not a whole lot of films that actually get released like with a majority of IMAX ratio stuff. So that would be really cool. But with the the ultimate cut and the theatrical cut thing, I'll have to go back at one point and actually, I've only watched a the theatrical cut one time when I saw it in theaters that one time. Because then I just I don't I think I only saw it once and then I got the ultimate cut immediately and that's all I've watched on any repeat viewing so it's kind of hard for me to even differentiate like what's missing from it because it's the very, it feels like the same the, movie just kind of flushed out a little bit the yeah. very beginning of the movie Superman I mean obviously it plays the same in both Superman comes to save Lois and mm-hmm. then the um the what you would call it, the mercenaries kill all those Burn people bodies, and they blame yeah. it on they blame it on Superman, but it doesn't make any sense because the mercenaries in the theatrical cut, all that happens is the mercenaries shoot everybody and then they take off and then Superman oh, they don't gets show blamed the burning? for it, which never made any sense because Superman doesn't use a gun. Why the hell is everybody blaming Superman for these people being killed yeah, no, when yeah, they I were clearly the shot? Yeah. In the in the ultimate cut, they actually have a scene where they burn the bodies, and so it looks like heat it visions. looks like there was heat vision maybe that was used to do it. So it at least gives you a rationale for why people might think it was Superman, even though it's still quite a jump in logic. But at least it, in the yeah, theatrical cut, it just still have bullets. Sense. It's like it, w- Superman came in with guns and killed people because he yeah. he needs firearms. What? Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. That definitely doesn't make That's sense. Stupid. That does that. That sounds like one of the things I remember thinking that exact same thing at some point in time. So it was probably when I watched the theatrical cut, I was like, why do they think he killed them? Yeah. And if they yeah. only show the, cause I remember the burning bodies. That's how I remember it now. Cause that's all I've watched the ultimate cut like three or four times. Only a theatrical yeah. cut once. So it's really like, I should probably go back and watch those at some point, just like back to back. I just don't know if I want to sit through that. That's like a five hour venture. <laughs> yeah. It's not like the greatest theatrical experience to begin with. It's, it's, it's okay. So I don't know if I actually. There's want probably to do it, a YouTube, somebody probably YouTubed. You probably just check YouTube and see if if somebody if, if yeah, nobody did then that version. might be a cool YouTube project to, to put up all the all the differences between a Snyder theatrical yeah. and a Snyder ultimate cut. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'd be interested to see it. Kind of like the Watchmen cut. Like that 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 yep. thing is just like grows. And, that's a kind of a big difference though. That that's like a whole extra hour of shit. And like once you get to the final like director's ultimate, there's like four different versions of that movie. It's and crazy. Then they entered they entered the animated sequences yeah. back in, which is very cool. And yeah. Yeah. I like that movie too. I thought that it's was so good. good. Yeah. yeah that, movie, that, was, that was a great movie. I don't know why people didn't like that. I know like the ending is different, but like all things considered, it was fine. Like it was I I liked it. I wish I, I, I wish it. they would have done, but but people also have to understand the time that movie was made. That yeah. was done before Marvel started knocking things out of the park and keeping yeah. it true to the comics. At point. that time that Watchmen was made. The, the belief was you couldn't keep some of the more fantastic elements of like Rocket Raccoon would have never gotten made um, when when Watchmen was made. Like nobody would mm-hmm. have ever touched Rocket Raccoon. It would have been like that's such a ridiculous concept. We could never do it on the screen. Even group. And the same for the same for the alien at the end of Watchmen. Everybody thought it was ridiculous. You couldn't do it. I mean, it's a ridiculous. It's a giant fucking squid like it's ridiculous in the comic you know like it's, yeah. it's in the graphic novel it's ridiculous as it is like it worked really well. that's what i was really happy to see with the watchman series being a direct sequel to that like that was a thing like the squids yep. were there so i was like like because you see that in the well, spoiler alert if you never watch it but it's in the first shot of the move the, the show like essentially it opens up with the squids falling I was yep. really happy. I was pleased to see that. That was a good little thing. Yeah. But yeah, um, it was good, but I'm excited for it. So yeah, if you're in the Dallas area, like I said, go check out this stuff and let us know how it is. And then, well, uh, well, oh, what you got? Well, I was just going to say, while we're talking about this, I mean, uh, we, we, we talked about it off camera and we, we don't have to spend oh, yeah. a lot of time on it, but, uh, what's her grace? Hell is it? Hell big. Randolph, Herbig? Grace Randolph, right? That's who you're Grace talking Randolph. about. Grace Randolph. Grace Randolph. Oh, sorry, I completely got butchered. Sorry, apologize for that. Um, Grace Randolph um, posted a tweet earlier this week claiming that there is internal traction at. I'm, I'm I'm paraphrasing here, but there's basically internal traction at Warner Brothers for Zach to do a Justice League two and three, possibly, um, considering how well 
his the the Zack Snyder Justice League cut is is tracking, I guess, for their internal numbers. So, and and that she was encouraging people to keep up the good word and the excitement around it. But then, of course, we went to look up the tweet today, and uh, you mentioned that it's been she's been it was taken down. So yeah, who knows so, what's going on with that. Yeah, and so with that, so here's the tweet, everybody. <laughs> okay, so that's the thing. But an I, interesting tweet. Luckily, though, John did send this, or I think it was you, John. You sent it in Discord. So, yeah. like, I have what it was. So she said, like, I had a wonderful evening watching a certain movie. Also, I'm hearing exciting things from multiple sources. JL 2 and 3 might now be possible. Some suits want Zack Snyder to direct Wonder Woman 3, which is where I immediately knew this was bullshit, to be honest with you. And then, uh, which I think is an excellent idea. The hype is real. Don't let up now. So, yeah. there's for Jack one, there's Nicholson. no fucking way that they would have Zack Snyder come do Wonder Woman. Like, absolutely Why would they not. ruin that Patty Jenkins relationship? Yeah, know? like, well, there's, there's, there's no, like, there's just, there's no reason for, they, they would never want that. They would, like, what, yeah, like, you have Patty Jenkins. Like, what you, yeah. Like, and Patty Jenkins and Zack Snyder have a really good working relationship. They're like friends. So, like, yeah, Zack wouldn't do that. I don't think either. Yeah. yeah, he would. Like, unless Patty wanted Zack to do it, that's the only way he would ever do that. Yeah. Like, and, and I don't know them by by any means, but I've seen their the, how they talk to each other and like they have a very good About relationship. Each other. Yeah, yeah. Like, so that would never happen. That's the only thing. I again, hearkening back to the whole story about the guy who commented on Matt Reeves's Batman picture. Don't believe everything you see on social media. <laughs> right? And that's one of the things I don't like about uh, some people who are not calling anybody out to be like mean or anything like that. I'm not going to use any names, but I don't like when people post news about stuff. And then when they get called out on it, they don't apologize. They don't say, Oh, well my source, you know, they don't own up to it. They just they, disappear. They just delete the tweet yeah. or, move on like they just act like it didn't happen so they just spread all this misinformation for clicks or for whatever but but they take no ownership in it you know what i mean i i, I think it's just a, it's a bit lazy really i could post tons of headlines that are completely uh, batshit crazy yeah like just to get clicks and people like fucking but because i mean look how gullible people are like this dude literally on the guy we talked about earlier commenting on matt reeves like he posted a thing saying the movie's done and he's asking a question if the thing got canceled. It's like, really? Like, it doesn't even make sense, my man. Like, yeah. But either way, the question is, guys, what do you think about this? If it, in the end, I don't think it holds absolute, there's zero weight to that tweet from Grace Randolph. I, I, do, I do, Warner Brothers is not trying to make Justice League two or three. It's not going to happen. Like, not that anything's not possible. Like, sure, it's possible. They made Snyder Cut, for heaven's sake. So it's possible, but it's not something they have planned right now. Like, there's no way. If they, Warner Brothers already knows how people reacted to Zack Snyder's DC Universe. Like, they already know. The, the, the people who hated Man of Steel and hated BVS, all, are they're not all of a sudden going to like Zack Snyder's Justice League. They already didn't like what he did with DC. It's it's not going to be some magical reinvention. of. It's just going to be another Zack Snyder Justice League DC movie. Like, and I'm excited for it. I like all Zack Snyder's movies. But dude, 50% of people didn't. Like, and it's not going to change the mind on that. Warner Brothers already know You already know that. I know that. So it's just weird that people think all this stuff's going to just magically happen. And everyone's just going to love everything. No. It's not going to happen. The people who don't like Zack Snyder's stuff are going to continue to not liking Zack Snyder's DC stuff. It just is what it is. I don't, I don't got anything, anything really else to add about that. But whatever you think, let us know down in the comment section below. All right, guys, so our next topic is going to move us into the Marvel Cinematic Universe for all you MCU fans. Kevin Feige here was recently uh, questioned about the w WandaVision. WandaVision, fantastic. Finale just happened last week. It was all good. Disappointed we don't have anything to watch this week. I still need to go catch up and watch the behind the scenes, well, not behind the scenes, but the, the making of. So I, I hope that's on par with more of the season one making of Mandalorian. The making of the season two of Mandalorian was just like a quick hour, like 45 minute behind the scenes thing. 
Which was good. I like watching that stuff. I love watching that stuff. I like movies. I like watching how they're made and all that fun stuff. So I need to go back and watch that. But Kevin Feige was just recently asked about uh, WandaVision and like the potential of a season two. And he had some interesting comments that I just wanted to kind of go over. Because it just shed some light about like why Kevin Feige has been so successful and why the MCU has been so successful and why how Kevin Feige has like propelled it to greatness in, in all reality. And they're just kind of like offhand comments, but it, it, they speak a lot of volumes because he was questioned about, you know, is one is one division going to have a season two and whatever. And he said, we're developing all of the shows the way they develop their movies. In other words, when we start a movie, we hope there's a part two, we hope there's a part three, but we aren't factoring that into part one. We're trying to make something that hooks people enough and that people enjoy and they want to revisit enough that they want to see the story continue. So that is the way we're proceeding on television as well. And with that, it's just like, it reminds me of Universal when they announced the Dark Universe and all that. And they were like, we're going to make the mummy. And they took the big press photo with... Who was it all? They had Johnny Depp and then like Tom Cruise and Benicio del Toro, whoever or whoever was all there. All these people they hadn't lined up to be in this dark universe, right? They like they were kicking it off with the mummy. They were gonna have the Bride of Frankenstein and like all this crazy stuff. The whole thing's can now. They put the universe before the movie. Like, you know what I mean? Like Kevin Feige doesn't do that. Kevin Feige tries to make a good movie. And like that's why it works. You know, like the universe was always something he w he wanted to do the MCU. But he would if it would if it wouldn't have worked, and if Iron Man didn't work, and then like if Captain America and Thor didn't work, then we wouldn't have it. They focused on making those movies work, and that's it's kind of like really what DC kind of struggled with. Like they, in some ways, like you, you could argue, like they we talked about it earlier. Back in 2014, 2015, 2016, whatever they announced, like ten movies. Four of them have been made. The rest have been completely scrapped. Like, and they were already late to, they all got, you know, like, late releases. It's just, it's just, it's a thing. It's this thing. And then he goes on to say, um, one more thing uh, to, to the actual WandaVision Season 2 question. He says, I've been at Marvel for too long to say a definite no or yes to anything in regards to your question about another season of WandaVision. But some of the shows that we're about to start filming, we are keeping in mind a structure that would lead into a season two and a season three in a more direct way than, say, a show like WandaVision, which clearly goes into a feature. Which, again, we've known that uh, it's going to be leading into Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness that was announced back at the Comic-Con. When they, when they announced Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse of Madness, they pulled... Uh, Elizabeth Olsen out on stage with Benedict Cumberbatch and announced that Scarlet Witch is going to be a part of it. And now like, Scarlet Witch is actually literally a part of it. Like, because she didn't get the moniker Scarlet Witch until the finale of WandaVision. So they kind of dropped that uh, little spoiler alert back then, if you really think about it. And uh, but, it says, but it is new. That's part of the fun, exciting, adrenaline-boosting creativity that we're able to do thanks to Disney+. Plus, and really to figure out new ways of storytelling. Perhaps someday we'll chart out five seasons of a show. But really we're focusing on delivering the best seasons we can do one at a time so far. And again, guys, I want to get your thoughts on this too, Rick and John. Because in my, in my mind, like I said, this just... I think it really, it's just like some kind of offhand just like comments, but it really speaks volume as to the success that Kevin Feige and the MCU has had. You know, like, like I said, they focus on what they're doing now. That makes That's perfect it. sense. I mean, like with the uh, universal monster thing or whatever you're talking about, that it, you can't put the idea before the actual stories or anything because then you're just kind of setting it up for disappointment, especially if the movies are bad or whatever. But if you, kind of just take it one step at a time and just stay in the present and not think about the future too much. I think it works a lot better and it looks like it's worked that way for, for Marvel at least. Yeah. Cause that's the thing too, with this is one thing that they, they've also done very well, which lends into that in some ways you can pick up like the MCU is this big overarching story, right? Like there's 10 years, 20 plus films. They're all connected, but you can pick up your very first movie could be the, 10th film and you will be able to watch the movie and enjoy it oh yeah for You're, sure that's how i am i mean yeah. obviously i'm not as into the like comic movies as you guys are or as knowledgeable i should say at least but i can still enjoy them and just you know i watched endgame 
couple of weeks back and you know i don't really remember like some of like age of ultron that sort of stuff but it was still good you know or infinity war like it i've watched infinity war in parts so it wasn't really fluent to me but watching endgame i was like this is good you know so yeah and you can follow along with it like you might not like you might not get all the references and all that I stuff. I knew what was going on, though. But like, yeah, you know exactly what's going on. Like, you get it. It's They don't, like... They make it easy to understand. Yeah, they don't make it a prerequisite to watch the ten other movies behind it. Yeah. It's They make each movie, they try to make it a good movie, and then hopefully if you liked, you know, and if Endgame was your first movie that you watched and you liked it... Well, now you can go back and watch all the other ones because, like, they hooked you in. You know what I mean? That's that's just one of, like, again, that's just one of the great things that Kevin Feige and, and, and Marvel has done with the MCU, in my opinion. Yeah. So. What are your thoughts on this, John? You got anything you want to add? I love Kevin Feige. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ben that Affleck dude, like, said he's, he's the best. He, so. That dude's a godsend. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know who tapped him to work at Marvel and work on the first Iron Man, but whoever did is almost e as much a genius because that, that was, I mean, without him there, um, maybe, maybe not, maybe there's some, maybe Marvel had something in the works. And, but I, I, I just, it just seems like from all accounts that he is the one, he's the engine that makes this Marvel machine work so efficiently and so well. And, um, I wish DC had somebody like that. I think I think there's a couple factors at play. I think um, definitely Feige being such so good at his job and what he does is is part of it. But I think the other part of it is he's he's allowed to do that. Um, when you look at a situation like DC, who we constantly, I, or at least I constantly gripe about and complain about, I think you see that lack of of trust or that lack of control that's handed over to those that are in charge, you constantly hear about, you know, things being changed. I mean, obviously the biggest example that we're coming up with the release of Zack Snyder's justice league, but you know, the, the studio interference with the way justice league played out, not allowing Zack's vision to actually sink or swim on its own. Um, just, and you saw how well it played out. It didn't play out at well at all. Like, I mean, that movie did terrible considering that's the first major big budget, version of justice league that we've ever gotten yet kevin feige is able to bring marvel's you know c level b level best characters and turn them into the biggest names in cinema of all time i mean you know it's just it, it's astounding that when you allow somebody that has a good creative vision to to execute it what can happen um and even you know i'd even go so far as to say you know while while Justice League, we just talked about in the last segment how Batman versus Superman was the theatrical cut wasn't even really Zack's vision for the movie. And you can tell because it plays terribly. It doesn't make sense. Um, the ultimate cut is a better movie because it does place, you know, make more sense. And, you know, for for as much as I don't like Batman and I talked about earlier why I don't like Batman in that movie. um, I will admit that the movie is a good movie when you see the, the the vision of the director and his story being told in one complete package the way you do in the ultimate cut. And I hope that I, I hope and anticipate that that's the same thing that's going to happen with um, the, the Justice League cut that comes out this week. If you allow the creator to tell their story and don't, you know, shoehorn this, that and the other thing in, it becomes a and I think, you know, obviously, you know, Kevin Feige has has managed to do what needs. He, it's like he he plants seeds in that can be that can grow in future films, but they don't have to. So things happen like they they can turn into something later on, but they don't have to. I mean, we got one of the greatest scenes in in my opinion, all of cinematic history with Cap wielding Thor's hammer in Endgame. That was just a short brief scene that happened, you know, 15 movies earlier in age of Ultron when it's a, you know, they're having this little party at the Avengers mansion and they're, they're doing this 
jokey kind of who can lift Thor's hammer. Nobody can move it except for Cap. You see it just twitch, maybe, or maybe your eyes played a trick on you, but it seems like it just twitched, and it pays off in such a wonderful way later on. And to have somebody that has the vision to, to weave all those narrative points together is just, it's a blessing. And, and, and clearly he knows what he's doing and focusing and keeping his focus, you know, on the immediate, but also with an eye towards what they can, what they can do in the future, not what they are doing, but what they can do. Oh yeah, dude. That's, I wish DC could do something like get somebody in there. Cause like Walter Amato would like, uh, he, he's kind of new on the scene. So like maybe Walter Amato can be that for, for DC. I don't know. It's too early to tell, I think at this point, and they're definitely going in a different direction. Like they're, they're focusing, which, which is good. They're focusing on making good movies. Like they're not uh, constraining themselves to a connected universe or just they're going to make good movies. And that's all I can really ask. And it definitely <laughs> seems from that, that big article that we talked about, you know, months ago that he, he put out, it definitely seems like he has a vision. He has mm -hmm. a clear idea of how he wants it to work and what, what he wants to happen. So maybe that, like you said, maybe he is that guy for DC. I hope so, because yeah. a lot of people I know, they brought Jeff Johns in a while back, and like he, he's not in the role anymore, but he was like the creator. They moved him to like the creative director of like Chief DC Creative movies. CCO, Chief Creative Officer. Yeah, and uh, and they were going to have him focus on like DC movies. Beth doesn't seem to have panned out, but he still is. Like he and Patty Jenkins were the 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 writers of the most recent Wonder Woman eighty four. Both of them were credited for the screenplay in that, so he still has his hand in a few baskets. I still contend. If any basket that he's going to have his hands in, it should be the Green Lantern one, but yeah. whatever. Um, I think, too, with uh, the to your point with the Batman thing, you know what? I, I've always said this. I think one of the biggest, like, kind of mis misnomers that kind of happened with the DC Universe and the BVS being the second film out of the gate is that the, Zach introduced this Batman and Ben Affleck's Batman in a way that was like, he's already, he's, he's been being Batman for 20 years and he's like this broken man. And I think it would have been much better if they would have made a Batman movie and we knew Batman, like this Batman, Why before he's Batman? going up against Superman. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I think that was the biggest, because I feel like it was a big, maybe it was Zach, maybe Zach wanted to do VVS, like, and he didn't want to do Man of Steel 2. Like, or a Batman movie or whatever. Like, who knows? I, I No one really knows. But, like, it almost feels like they were rushing to get to their connected universe because they went from super a solo Superman movie where he's not even Superman until the end of the movie. And, oh, now there's Batman. He's been Batman for 20 years, and he's just broken. And, like, you know, it's like, not, but now we can do Justice League once we get this done, so we should totally do well, This is what it felt like. It was not right. just that, too. It was like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's also Wonder Woman in this movie. And, hey, we're yeah, going to give you true. snippets of Cyborg, Flash, and oh, Aquaman, yeah, too, because, because we can't let something develop naturally. We have to. Yeah. We've, we, have, we have mismanaged our characters so bad over the past few years that Marvel is kicking our butts right now. So in order to try and cash in, we're going to just throw all our chips on the table and roll roll the crap dice once and oh wait nope we crapped out and so now we're screwed for the next 10 years it's like yeah oh. it's a good way and to put it and i've always hated and be the the way they introduced aquaman flash and cyborg was it with wonder woman <laughs> like just like clicking on like lex Luthor <laughs> had made all the logos <laughs> yeah it's like dude it's so stupid like that is really like dumb. like the fact that like lex had these files and made like who made the logo? Who did like, you have like a graphic designer? Yeah, that's what it was <laughs> like you you're making like the Flash has it. We found out in the freaking the CW crossover thing with Ezra Miller's Flash that he wasn't even Ezra Miller's Flash wasn't even called the Flash yet, but he had his yeah. logo in BVS. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's a little bit inconsistent. It was really stupid, and the the whole. I, the funniest one though was Jason Momoa's Aquaman. It's just the video of him in the water, just like with the trident, and then he just, boo, just that's it. It's like, <laughs> the drone, why was like yeah? The why why did that need to be there? It was like James Cameron going down there looking for the Titanic, and then like boom, 
It was a little, little fish man. Wow. It was just, yeah, right. That was the stupidest way to introduce... <laughs> it, that was like your gripe about them introducing the engineer in freaking Marvel or in the WandaVision. Yeah. It was the exactly. same way. Like, it was just like, let's just have them in there just to be in there. Just to, there. It's They're there. It's like... The lamest way possible to introduce a yeah. character. Like, like, yeah. It's like, we we want to have Aquaman in here, so why don't we just have a quick like YouTube video of a guy in the ocean just going real fast? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's so stupid. It really is. <laughs> Nevertheless, Kevin Feige is indeed a mastermind. I hope, I, I'm really excited to see what he does post-Marvel. Like, if I'm sure uh, someday down the future, like, he's making that bite, Star bite Wars movie. Tongue. Just bite your tongue. Don't even. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> no. would you take, Would if, if you were offered right now, because Marvel's like, it's set up. It's going good. If if you could have Kevin Feige move over to Warner Brothers and do his, work his magic for DC, would you, like, do that? I'll tell I, you I, no. I, I kind of would. I really do I, think I, I, I would. And, and, and I wouldn't because <clears> if it's <throat> not broke, don't don't fix it. Like, I don't want to F with the Marvel universe at all. We just got done with WandaVision, which was their first foray into television. And it was, in my opinion, spectacular. Like, mm -hmm. and we got Falcon and Winter Soldier coming up. And like, it ain't broke. Leave that stuff alone. Just let them do their thing. Like DC, there, there's lots of creative people out there in the world. Go find somebody, figure it out. But like... I, I know what you're saying. I'm tempted to say yes, but but in my heart, I'm like, no, I want I I would I would take another 10 years of the success of Marvel and rather than, you know, roll the dice on possibly getting DC to get their act together, because I don't think it's just DC. I think it's Warner Brothers, too. So, oh, yeah, for sure. Know. Yeah, I, I'm just excited to see what he does later, like post kind of like I've, I've said the same thing about the Russos, like they made a the some of the best marvel movies possible but they have their foray into like things outside of the mcu haven't really panned out that well like none of their movies like the 21 bridges movie the extraction movie that was a good Cherry, movie, like well they haven't like, like been very well received movie. like not they haven't been unanimously like, loved I, like i, I guess like i need to go look at reviews but i, I really like yeah. 21 bridges like it yeah, was, see, that, it, was it, it, it didn't get good that's it review wise in, in like in profitability wise they weren't they were sure. nowhere near as successful as their their marvel movies were you know they not, and as far as critics go and obviously box office but like that i mean box office aside and like any any little movie isn't gonna make as much as a marvel movie that goes without saying but it's the same situation like i'd like to see so I'm, I'm excited that kevin feige's doing the star wars movie i want to see him flex his creative muscles outside of marvel just to see like is he just a one-trick pony like is it just like he just is right. a Marvel fanboy and he's just It'd be almost amazing at it outside of Marvel? Now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, just, I I just I'm excited to see that as his career goes on because like I don't think he's a one trick pony. That's why I, I I can't wait to see him do other things and bring that greatness to other things like Star Wars. Very excited for what him and it's that's like, it's gonna like, be interesting. That's what I'm saying. And then like Taika Waititi's doing Star Wars and like that's I feel the same way about Taika Waititi as I do about like Kevin Feige, like. I'll watch anything like Taika Waititi does. So like, I can't wait to see him make like a big budget star Wars movie. So yeah, Marvel and Marvel and Disney, they, they got some, they got some good people. They got some good creative team behind them for sure. But the question is guys, what do you think about all this? Do you think, uh, you, you kind of agree with us where we're like, Kevin Feige is the literal God. Like he is the literal God. Like I know, like, I, I don't know anybody else. No one. No, it's clear. Like Ben Affleck even said himself that Kevin Feige is like literally the the greatest producer to have ever lived. And like at this point in time, I think it's no contest. Like he, as far as movie producers goes, he's the goat so far. Like maybe not the goat, but he's if he keeps us up for another ten years, he will absolutely be the goat. But whatever you think, let us know down in the comment section below. All right, guys. So our last final topic for today's show. Is going to be we're just going to quickly cover some of the we're sticking in the MCU world for this, but some early reactions in the just like quick uh, you know your your social media reactions for the Falcon and Winter Soldier have came out. So we're just going to cover some of those. There's no, no no spoilers or anything like that for it. It's just some people have gotten to see the first episode they release up to some press people and they've posted their comments online. So I'm just going to go over a couple of them, give us thoughts, and then we're going to sign off here. So. 
first off, we got, let's go through some of these. So Steven Weintraub from Collider here says, watch the first episode of, oh wait, no, his is up here. Yeah, the first episode of Falcon Winter Soldier is loaded with action that you'd expect to see in an MCU movie, but for me, the best stuff were the quiet scenes that showed Bucky dealing with his past and Falcon trying to figure out his post-blip life. Big thumbs up. Which has been, like, I kind of figured, I, I think I said it last week, like, I feel like the general consensus for Falcon Winter Soldier is going to be, like, a more traditional Marvel thing. Like, just kind of what we've come to expect from seeing a Marvel whatever. As opposed to WandaVision being this, like, weirdly unique thing for the most part. <clears throat> I really am losing my voice right now. Oh, God. And then we got, watch the first episode of Falcon Winter Soldier. It's a lot of fun. It didn't grab me nearly as much as WandaVision episode one and felt much more like standard Marvel movie fare. Not in a bad way. The quiet character moments were my favorite of the episode. That was from a Chris Hainer. I'm was not a, familiar uh, with general that. General theme going so far, it seems like. Yeah. So th that was my early prediction for the show overall, too. So, like, it's, it's kind of expected, really. I really liked the first episode of Falcon Winter Soldier. It took a bit to totally grab me, but as it goes on, you see where they're going as far as getting to dig deep on those guys or on who these guys are in a way we had it before there quickly is some Bucky stuff that is really powerful, which has been my Bucky's one of my favorite characters in the MCU, like bar none. I love Bucky. So I'm, uh, I'm excited for that. Like that, that's, that's why I was most initially anticipating Falcon winter soldier more than any other, uh, Marvel show that was coming to Disney plus until I saw that Loki trailer. And then that one kind of bumped up for me. But it was just because of Falcon Winter, or just because of Winter Soldier himself. And then we got here. Let's just look at like one or two more here. The the first episode of Falcon Winter Soldier feels like a movie in a big way, a lot more so than WandaVision, not a knock. And the opening action screen, I guess he meant scene. The opening action scene feels like a huge MCU action sequence and not a TV fight. Story feels like it has significant MCU consequences. That's kind of interesting. Because there hasn't really been any word about this, the Falcon and Winter Soldier actually carrying over into anything. Like, we had WandaVision set up to be, you know, this overarching story between Loki, Spider-Man, and Doctor Strange. Falcon and Winter Soldier was standing. It wasn't actually mentioned in that, so that's interesting. And then, uh, well, let's look at this last one here. Saw first episode of Disney Plus and Marvel, uh, Wanda, Falcon and Winter Soldier. And as a huge fan of 2014's Captain America, the Winter Soldier, I'm happy to report this is a return to that grounded, more human glimpse into the MCU. Anthony Mackie gets more to explore Sam's place in a very divided world. There you have it. Everybody, I mean, everybody's saying it's good. So that's really all I can... I don't know what else they're going to say. They're going to go and, like, talk shit about it when they got... They let them watch it early. I, like, never see anybody really... Actually, I don't know if that's true. When No, because Wonder Woman, I remember, Wonder Woman 84 had all shining, glowing reviews. I don't know if maybe it's because, like, they target people, too. Like, they know, like... The kind of the people who are already maybe fans of the MCU and they give them the first thing because they can... Because you know they know. Like, you know Disney's marketing department. They know exactly who to, like... If they want good press, there's specific people out there who they know have a track record of liking their material. So, that, like, you know I mean? I think maybe they'll send it to them first. Yeah, that makes maybe. sense. Maybe. I feel like Wonder Woman, like, 84, like, kind of thing would be, like, same way. Because once Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 84, the interesting thing was, like, all the early responses for Wonder Woman 84 were like glowing, amazing reviews. But then once it became available to everybody, it was very mixed. It went to like straight, it went to like your, the same way everyone felt about BVS and Man of Steel, like pretty much a 50, 50 split. It's like they loved it or they hated it. So it's just kind of interesting. So never, just like you never you pay too much attention to stuff on social media because you just don't know if it's going to be true. That's kind of like a running theme here, but either way, what do you guys think about these, uh, these early reviews for you to get you more excited. Sounds good. Yeah. <clears throat> like, I mean, I, I'm going to watch it and, uh, it definitely sounds like there's, like they said, more of a human element and, uh, it sounds like it's going to be really good for like a TV show, you know, not that WandaVision wasn't good, but it's like a totally different style, I think, than what they were going for with that. Where, where do you have Falcon Winter Soldier for you? Who's someone who's not 
super into like the MCU or anything. Well, but, like where do you have it ranked? I don't know. Uh, you know, with WandaVision, I didn't know much about those characters and I thought it was good. So it really just depends on how the show itself is. Um, Winter Soldier is a pretty cool character. I don't know much about Falcon at all. I know that sounds horrible, but um, nobody knew anything about Falcon before these movies. That's what I'm saying. Like, nobody. I, yeah. So um, really, it's just I'm the kind of person like I believe it when I sees it sort of thing, you know, yeah. but it sounds like from these reviews and what people are saying, that it's <clears> going to be pretty good. But again, <throat> it might be targeted towards certain people, but it sounds overall generally positive. Yeah. Fun fact about Anthony Mackie, though, in the Falcon is he is the only character, supposedly the MCU, that got his role without auditioning. Interesting. Kevin Feige knew in his mind that he wanted Anthony Mackie to play Falcon, so he just offered him the role. Fun fact. I just read that yeah, the other day. That's so. interesting. This is what it is. Good casting. <laughs> yeah, he's great. So, like, he, he's, he's yeah. great in the role, so totally yeah. for it. Like, this is a fun fact I read the other day. What do you think, John? Where yeah. do you have Falcon or a soldier? I mean, <laughs> I'm a homer for these for these uh, as as you saw my glowing endorsement of Kevin Feige last segment. Um, You'd be one of the I people mean, they'd send you the. Yeah, they would for. send me the screen. That would yeah. be. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. I I I would you know I I think my most anticipated MCU thing is whatever the next thing is that's coming out. Um, to yep. be real generic about it, I will say <laughs> that I think. Regardless, I was super happy at the Disney investors meeting when they talked about how um, Falcon and Winter Soldier was basically just like an MCU movie that they broke up into different parts. And I, I, you know, I'm real excited about that. I was excited to get back into we talked about this last week, how um, each show and each movie kind of fills a different uh, type or a different uh sort of of entertainment so so wandavision obviously dealt with sitcoms and you had that kind of um experimental element to that show that was going on um i think that this show you know, dr strange is kind of the sorcerer magic element um area of the mcu um to me cap and bucky and Sam have all been part of like the espionage the shield. Um, you had the whole thing with Hydra that went down in the winter soldier. Um, so I think, I think all these, all this is kind of their in, espionage arena. And I'm glad to return to that because th these are my favorite characters out of all the characters in MCU. Um, and I think with Steve gone, it's going to give even more opportunity for, Bucky and Sam to really step to the forefront and become leaders of the MCU, which is exciting for me. Um, we saw Cap hand the shield to Sam and clearly from at the end of Endgame, but clearly from the previews of this, it's not as simple as that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they play that out. Um, and then, you know, I just... I like the idea of getting an MCU movie. It sounds like that's what this is going to be, just broken up. You know what the question I have, too, though, with the shield thing? So when 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 Cap is a super soldier, so when he throws the shield, it bounces off stuff. He can catch it, and they won't cut his arm off. Uh, it ain't gonna work that way. Falcon's though. just a dude. Like right. he, he has not no powers. He can't. He he couldn't throw that thing any harder. He could throw a frisbee. He's a pretty resilient dude, but yeah, it's yeah. no different than. Yeah, yeah, he's just a dude with some with some tech that's not even his. Like he didn't make it. Like. Tony made his suit like, you know, not the Falcons like bad. He's great at what he does. It's just not like the same, like Winter Soldier is, a, he's a super soldier. He has the same serum that freaking he has. And he has a vibranium arm. So like if he throws a shield around, it'll work. It's fine. So I don't know what they're going to do. Like, it'd be interesting to see what they do with Sam having the shield at all. Like, right. Cause like he can't throw it as hard. Like it's just, Blatantly can't. Sure, he can't. He can't throw it as hard, but he can. I mean, like and you can't could catch throw, it. You could throw a shield pretty darn hard and knock somebody out with it. You could oh, bounce yeah, a sure. shield off of something. You could bounce a shield off of something and catch it. I like. I mean, he can still use the shield. It just won't be as you know impactful as yeah, like Bucky. And he can catch it. I mean, if if you threw a frisbee and bounced it off a wall and it came bouncing back to you, you could catch it. It's not well, but this is a giant that's vibranium a, thing. A little different than a frisbee. Yeah, I mean it's gonna be like it'll hurt you real bad. 
You know, trying to I catch a metal baseball, like, even catching know. a regular baseball, like a hard object moving fast, it hurts. You know, like this is a maybe he's got a special glove. Uh, maybe maybe he's got the magnetic thing on his arm, like Cap had at the beginning of Age of Ultron, and he kicks it up and then just like vroomps to his. So yeah. Maybe he's got that to catch it. Like you know what I mean? Maybe yeah. maybe that's how they do it. It'll just be interesting to see. It's just a stupid little note, like you know, just like you know, super soldiers. Like what is what is this? But they also have the whole uh, the guy here, the, the 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 bad Captain America dude. So I wonder what he's going to be doing too. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Was Se- what is his name? Secret agent or what is his name? I can't remember. Uh, it's like U.S. agent. Yeah, or U.S. agent. Yeah, U.S. agent. Yeah. So they got U.S. agent Captain America. Like so that's Zemo. Then they got the. Flag Smasher. There's, a, there's actually kind of a lot going on. So um, it, it's well, going to be I, interesting to see. Yeah. I like that we're getting Agent Carter back, too. We haven't seen her yeah. in a long time. Um, I like that they're working her back into it. And, and you know, obviously, I'm I'm excited for... Yeah, that was one thing, uh, WandaVision. Obviously, we got some of it at the end of it. But we're going to get these the, the big, classic, you know, action set pieces back that... that are hallmarks of the MCU too with this series. I think uh, WandaVision had some to an extent. Obviously, the last episode had a lot, um, but we didn't have a whole lot of action. I expect some really um, spectacular fight sequences and, and action set pieces in this mm-hmm. in this series too. Yeah, and they showed like uh, that in some of like the trailers and TV spots where Falcon and doing the thing whipping through the mountains and stuff. Like it all yep. looks great. Like yeah. it, it looks yep. really good. So I'm definitely I'm excited to see it. It's gonna be nice to have like your your a traditional Marvel thing. In all honesty, like you know, it's, it's like we said, like sometimes that's just that's good. You know, yeah. it's like when I watch Godzilla, King of the Monsters, I just want some good dumb fun. Like that's what I want. So hopefully I can get that. And then like you know, I don't need to be speculating what's gonna happen next every episode for this weird cameo from an engineer they mentioned twice and means nothing. Like, I don't need that every single time I watch something. Like sometimes I just like to watch it. It tells a story, and I move on. Like you know, right. I'm not left with a million questions afterward. Like it's, there's nothing wrong with that. Speculation is perfectly fine too, though. Like that's all fun. But it's not always needed. You know what I mean? That's not what made WandaVision good. WandaVision was good because it was a good show. Like, yeah. period. Like, everyone's speculations and shit, that's not what made it good, you know? That was just fun. That was just fun to do every week. So I'm looking forward to it, though. I'm definitely excited for Falcon Winter Soldier. We only got, wait, wait five, five days after the show goes up? After this goes up? Something, it was going to be hey, a hey. big week. It's the day after Snyder Cut. So I think it comes out yep. on the 19th. So the, isn't that a Saturday release in or is Snyder Cut coming out on Thursday? Friday. Snyder Cut Thursday. Yeah, Snyder Cut Thursday. Yeah, uh, there we go. Falcon Warrior Soldiers Friday. Yep. So there it is. We don't have too long. But like five days from now, we'll, be, we'll have oh. Snyder Cut and Falcon. By the way, this is unrelated to Falcon, but since we're talking about Snyder Cut, don't forget that uh, Wednesday oh, yeah. evening at 11 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m p.m. Pacific, um, they're going to do a special red carpet premiere. For those that are that are hyped up about Justice League, they are doing a red carpet premiere event online with Kevin Smith hosting with Zack Snyder. Yep, there it is. Um, for an hour before, I assume it goes live at midnight Eastern there on the 18th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That'll be fun, too, because that's the thing, and that's another thing, too, like, uh, like when I was when I commented earlier, where like people have been wondering, like why haven't they been marketing the Snyder Cut? I was like, they totally have been marketing the Snyder Cut, and like you said, it's like a targeted thing. Like they're not going to be playing these ads on Monday morning television because those people aren't going to watch it. Like that's not the point, you know. So like they're doing this, and everybody who needs to know about this. They probably know about it. And we're like, and I said, they're doing the whole freaking museum thing down in Texas. Like, they're definitely marketing the thing. Yeah. It's just a very targeted marketing strategy. So, it, it, not everything gets big commercials every every channel you flip on TV. You know what I mean? It's just not how it works. But either way, big week coming ahead of us in general. So, question is, guys, what do you think about this? Or do you do you take any any grain of salt with you know these these early releases? Are you skeptical about the early you know 
early comments from Falcon and Winter Soldier being like amazing. Because I said, I tell you what, the only thing that has me skeptical at all was just what what happened with Wonder Woman eighty four. Because it was the same kind of glowing reviews, but then once it comes out, like despite what I think about it or you think about it, just the reviews itself, they started out great for the early ones, and then as soon as it came out, it ended up being a very divisive movie. So I don't think Marvel doesn't really have a track record right that, but just take everything with a grain of salt. So whatever you think, though, let us know down in the comment section below. But we're going to wrap it up here for today, guys. So Rick... Where can everybody find you online, good sir? Follow me on Instagram, Sir Rick Metz, spelled exactly like it is on the show here. Uh, look at my stupid pictures, my stories, all that stuff, and uh, yeah. All I don't right. have a Twitter or anything like that, so yeah, uh, that's about the best you get. All right, there it is. John, how about you? Where can everybody find you online? Uh, I'm over at Twitter and Instagram at Nightwing underscore K. There it is. You can follow me simply at Sir Rob Bifo on any platform of choice. Aside from YouTube, it's just Rob Bifo. So there it is. Uh, but that's it. So again, every uh, don't forget, guys, always like and subscribe, all that sorts of fun stuff. Thank you for watching and all that. You can submit topics and questions to the show by emailing us directly at honestandoneducated at gmail.com. That's honestandoneducated at gmail.com. Wednesday new collectible review coming out i think it's gonna be i think we'll have the the deathstroke hot toys deathstroke review going live it's right there you can see it right there we're gonna have this bad boy we'll have the review up for this on wednesday then we'll have the genos review the following wednesday actually i did the unboxing and preview of this guy so that video will be up shortly as well. Might come out around the same time as the actual review. We'll wait and see. But either way, statue reviews and hot toys reviews, all that stuff comes up every Wednesday. Every Friday, we stream only around 8, 8, 30, 9 p.m. EST. So come hang out with us there. That's where we do all the unboxings and figure previews and things like that. Play some video games. John and I just... I revisited Star Wars The Old Republic since... It's for ten, 10 years ago, whenever the game first launched, I, w I jumped on that train. I played the hell out of the game for, you know, the first year it was out. And it just kind of died. Revisited that. It was John's first foyer into an MMO. So go back and watch that uh, stream there. We'll probably play some more of it. Probably going to play some WoW or something like that, too. Get into some, get into some good stuff, you know, coming up here. Not that Star Wars isn't good. It's just, it's not as good as WoW is all. So, but anyway, guys... That'll do it for us today. Thank you for watching. Again, h and every Monday, reviews every Wednesday, stream every Friday. So that's it. But until next time, guys, take care.